Things are getting stranger by the day. Just a coincidence, or is something more sinister happening right under our noses? We want to warn you now, this next story is disturbing. Namely, in earlier times, it was easier to control a million people, literally, than physically to kill a million people. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million people. It is easier to kill than to control. I would like to reduce the number of people on the planet because there's too many of us. It's a planet of finite resources and we're using them up. First, we've got population. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. The true ruling elite are a death cult, pure evil. The elite are extremely wealthy. They have more money than you can think of. So why would they want even more money, even more control? It's because they use their wealth and power to execute their agenda, to live out their evil. If you think this is just conspiracy theory, think again. Look around you. Everything benefits them and not humanity. The globalists have a religion. To the public, it's sold as climate change or the global crisis. What is the basis of the climate change agenda? It's population control. It's depopulation. The elite look at us as parasites that need to be controlled and killed. There is an unelected network that controls what the public sees. Plausible deniability is their cover. They are playing dumb on every level to gaslight us. The same agendas throughout history are presented differently with the same goals. The elite are becoming restless and are now out in the open with who they really are. Corruption in the government is just the tip of the iceberg. The upper echelon at the top have an anti-human agenda. Threats of world war, but behind the scene, it's more about control and backdoor dealings between world governments. The open border, drug trafficking, Human trafficking is covered up and controlled by our own government. It's deeper than that. There is a reason why most of these corruption networks never get shut down. These anti-humanists control mostly everything. You'd be shocked to know what the people in most power positions really think of the general public. The elite's corruption network operates like prison gangs or like a mafia, but on a larger scale. Blackmail, controllers, handlers, money laundering. If you want to stay rich and powerful, you'll have to do their dirty work. They have their hands in everything. A lot of these players simply love the spotlight. Most of the celebrities, politicians, CEOs love the fame and fortune. But the ones at the top of these groups are completely evil. Many become unwillingly controlled by signing on into the club without knowing what they are actually involved with behind the scenes. Most of humanity is asleep and distracted by meaninglessness. The elite are... Welcome to the Cherie's The Realist Show.
I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people are not going to agree with this, but not a question of if, but when there's going to be a chemical or biological attack on the American people. And what is their solution? They say, give up our right, submit to Big Brother. Uh, don't get the vaccine, you can't go to the supermarket. Don't have the vaccine, you don't show it, you can't go to the ball game. Don't have the vaccine, you can't go to work. Don't have the vaccine, you can't come here. No shirt, no shoes, no service. Peace and love, family. Peace, peace, peace. I hope you guys can hear me. I hope you guys are having a great night. Thank you so much for taking the time to come out and come through and see what I got cooking for y'all tonight. Thank you all so, 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 so much. Peace and love to all of y'all. I just wanted to come on and let y'all hear my voice. But there's still a couple things I need to do real quick. So, yeah, just hold on. Bear with me. Say I'm hustling and I'm grinding I'm making moves with my money on my mind And I can't fall short, no, no, always so no, no, Keep it down, slow-mo, oh, oh Say I'm hustling and I'm grinding I'm making moves with my money on my mind And I can't fall short, no, no, always so no, no, Keep it down, slow, slow-mo, oh, oh No, baby. Peace and love. Peace and love. All right, y'all. So y'all know what my uh, title says. So I'm really not going to waste a lot of time trying to get into it tonight. Um, this will probably be like a two-part breakdown. And this article <laughs> is just going to touch on, like the title says, Visualizing the Middle Passage, um, the Brooks and the Reality of Ship Crowding in the Transatlantic Slave Trade. So we've been having all these conversations around um, the boat and the traffic, all these different conversations about whether or not uh, such a journey is possible. Um, and if, you know, there could have been something, you know, a little bit more, a little bit deeper. So I'm just trying to make sure I don't got nothing else. Let me see. Let me shout out who's here or who made it through and who couldn't or whatever. Peace, Big Dog, Philly OG, Dark Moon Goddess, Peace Love. What's up, Niji Superior? Straight Smoke. Hey, Love. Jeremy Royster. Yes, Peace Love. Shout out to the family. Thank you guys so much. Let me go ahead and just get this screen shade popping. We're not going, like I said, we're not going to wait. Because I still got a homework assignment I got to do. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to get this in real quick while, you know, the time permits. So, yes, as you guys can see, this article is by Nicholas Radburn and David Eltis. He's one of the main people that works with the um, slavewages.org. He's one of the main people that deals with that website and who... Um, help, uh, you know, bring in the numbers and understanding how many people actually um, embark, disembarked and embarked, et cetera, from Africa to America and other places. So like I said, this right here, you guys can see the title. It's very, very 
clean and cut and dry. Okay. <clears throat> already started. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just read probably like the first eight or so pages because as you can see, it's 35 pages long. Um, Like I said, it's going to have to be broken down into two points. Uh, This is in 2019. So this is a little more updated. I hope you guys really enjoy and, you know, if enough people pull up, then I will have a discussion. If not, shit, it'll be night night. Okay. Okay. Can y'all see it really good? Just let me know if you guys can really see it. Put a one in the chat if that's visible to you guys. Um, shout out to my yes, have big dog, period. Yeah, shout out to Big Dog Philly OG. OG, damn. Always supporting me and looking out, and you know, thank you so much. Shout out to you too, Straight Smoke, for supporting the kid and looking out, and you know, what I'm saying, really, really, uh, you know, supporting me, and I really, really do appreciate it. Okay, so let's go. Visualizing the Middle Passage, the Brooks, and the reality of ship crowding in the transatlantic slave trade. Okay, in January 1789. The Society for Effecting the Abolition of the Slave Trade, ceased, published their famous diagram of the Liverpool slave ship Brooks, an image that has been subsequently come to embody the African experience of the Middle Passage. And we all know that the Middle Passage is uh, what they said they brought a lot of our uh, quote unquote ancestors on. So you know, we have to understand like that, that whole experience was called um, the Middle Passage. Emerging from measurements taken by Parliament, the scale model included 470 men, women, and children packed together between the vessel's decks. The diagram captured the inhumanity of the slave trade better than the reams of Parliament testimony, and pamphlets. Realizing the Brooks' potential to spur the campaign, ceased disseminated thousands of copies of the image in newspapers, magazines, books, pamphlets, and posters. The picture quickly traveled from Britain to France and the United States, where it both reflected and augmented a shift in attitudes toward the trade at a time when these three countries were together dispatching much more than one half of all slaving vessels. <laughs> the Brooks remains one of the most recognizable images in the history of print culture. In terms of its ability to embody a cause across linguistic boundaries, the poster belongs with the 1972 photograph of Fan T. Kim Fuck. Ooh, excuse me, Fook. <laughs> the nine year old Vietnamese girl trying to escape a nap napalm attack, an Alberto Diaz photograph of Che Guevara. And prominence has only grown with Britain's 2007 Bicentennial of the Abolition Act, which featured its conspicuously in... Okay, y'all. Uh, so that's the description right there, as you all can see. That's the slave book. That's how it looked, allegedly. That's how they did they did, allegedly. the commemorative parliament exhibition. When a full scale outline of the image was recreated, recreated in several British cities, hundreds of people laid on the ground to replicate the Brooks slave holds. The Brooks plant is also central to the permanent slave trade exhibition in the Smithsonian's new African-American museum. And it is ubiquitous in other museum galleries devoted to slavery throughout the world. 
Few histories fail to include it to represent the African experience of the Middle Passage. Copied endlessly in books, magazines, museum halls, art exhibits, television shows, and even t-shirts, the Brooks diagram remains as Wood wrote even before the Bicentennial celebrations, the most famous, widely reproduced, and widely adapted image representing slave conditions on the Middle Passage ever made. <laughs> That's a wild statement. The most famous, widely reproduced, and widely adapted image representing slave conditions on the Middle Passage ever made. Despite its fame and ubiquity, scholars did not begin to interact, I mean, interrogate the Brooks diagram long history until the last 20 years. Riedeker, who studied the abolitionist's production and use of the image in his book, The Slave Ship, A Human History, which placed the diagram on its cover, suggests that the diagram made the ships, blah, suggests that the diagram made the slave ship real and powerfully captured the process by which human beings were being reduced to property. Ooh, why do you do that every time? So y'all gotta understand, like, even right there, like, this imagery was used to make us believe some shit that is not factual, guys, okay? Like, this image was used like they said, this image was only supposed to be about the Middle Passage, but this image has become the image of slavery in general. So, like, even when you're, when you're talking about slavery, the first thing they're going to show is that image, the Brooks Diagram. And I'm sure a lot of people didn't know that it was called the Brooks Diagram. But there it is. Wood extensively explored the history of the image's production, its connection to other abolitionist art, and its subsequent proliferation in myriad forms down to the present day. Unlike Redliker, unlike Redeker, Wood critiqued the image's lack of African agency. The position of the African figures, supine to use his word, implies a passivity that scholars have demonstrated to be patently false. As Wood points out, modern viewers of the Brooks image only only too happy to accept this idealized version of a slave deck as the standard version of events. Although schematic and unrealistic, it paradoxically seems to represent the truth or at least a half truth. The article builds on Wood's critique of the Brooks diagram depiction of enslaved Africans by analyzing for the first time its version of ship crowding during the Middle Passage. The diagram's original purpose was to reveal the close packing of enslaved people to give the spectator, ooh, the spectator, and I thought I saw abolitionists, spectator and people to give the spectator as abolitionist Thomas Clarkson later wrote, an idea of the suffering of the Africans in the Middle Passage. Using the diagram alongside the graphic testimony of numerous witnesses, abolitionists argued that the ship crowding led directly to the deaths of enslaved Africans, an issue that has been subsequently observed, absorbed by historians. The article does not intend to revisit the question of crowding's relationship to mortality. Instead, it identifies two major problems with the way that the Brooks image depicts ship crowding. First, the diagram misrepresents the African experience during the height of the slave trade between 1700 and 1788. It does not capture the degree to which enslaved people were crowded either on the brooks or on the majority of other British slaving vessels during the 18th century. Come on. I'll just be cooking for real. Y'all don't even understand. Second, in showing only a single British vessel during the 18th century, the Brooks diagram ignores the many forms of coerced transportation that enslaved Africans had to endure throughout the slave trade's nearly four-century history. 
The treatment of slaves during the first transatlantic voyages in the early 16th century differed sharply from those after 1807 and from the British and French dominated trade of the late 18th century, two trades that account for most of the scholarship about the transoceanic about the transoceanic traffic of captive peoples. This study illuminates those two issues through a comparison with other pictorial representation of strip of ship crowding, a use of quantitative data, and the testimony of slave traders. The abolitionist authors of the book, The Brooks Diagram, never intended it to be an accurate representation of ship crowding on the Middle Passage prior to 1789, when Parliament began regulating British slave ships. Historians should certainly use the Brooks diagram to explain ab the abolitionist campaign's successful use of visual propaganda, but not as but not as a proxy for Africans' experience of the Middle Passage beyond a narrow period of Britain's slave trade, 1789 to 1807. Several other images are better portrayals of the changing shipboard conditions in the transatlantic slave trade over time and space. A case in point is the illustration of the French slave ship Marie Serafique, unearthed in 2005, which carried 307 enslaved people in, in 1769-70. That's his uh, the Voyage ID link. That's the uh, that's his source. Unlike the Brooks, which was produced by abolitionists. The skilled rendering of the Marie Seraphique was apparently painted by two officers serving aboard the vessel who actually witnessed the crowdings of slaves. So I'm guessing that this Seraphique is uh, how they you, they use that model to kind of create the Brooks diagram. I'm guessing, or maybe use that as a kind of model. All right. Moreover. Three 19th century illustrations of ships from the trades, illegal era, post-1807, shine a brighter light on the variety of forced transport as it does information about practices during the earliest days of the slave trade. In the future, digital technologies hold the promise of providing new ways to visualize the middle passage that do not rely solely on problematic contemporary images such as the books. Problematical contemporary images such as the books, the Brooks, excuse me, y'all. Greedy. <laughs> How you doing, friend? Hope you're doing good tonight. Shout out to you. Shout out to Big Dog Philly OG. <clears throat> the Brooks and ship crowding in, in the late 18th century British slave trade. Cease campaign strategically focused on the crowding of enslaved Africans on the Middle Passage as a wedge issue amendable to quantitative data and brought it to life by eyewitness testimony. According to Clarkson, it appeared obvious to cease that it should be, that it should select someone, ship which had been engaged in the slave trade, draw a plan of the vessel with her real dimensions, and then depict enslaved people trapped aboard because no member of the society could, could board a slave ship and draw it from life. Cease relied on the 43 measurements of the nine Liverpool vessels that Naval Captain Robert Perry had taken in June 1788 at Parliament's behest, all of which had the demarcated rooms as Perry's label in his report, where the Africans were imprisoned between decks. Parliament's tabulated Perry, Perry's data and made it available to both abolitionists and slave traders for the use in the subsequent debates. At the top of Perry's list, Clarkson wrote, stood the ship Brooks, the sea selected as the subject of his diagram, thinking it's less objectionable to take the first vessel that came than any other. Ooh. I keep feeling, I gotta, yeah, because oh. Okay. 
Registers of Liverpool shipping, which detailed the dimensions of 606 slaving vessels that conducted 2,083 voyages between 1782 and 1807, show that the Brooks was unusually large. The median slaving vessels measured 86 feet long and 24 feet wide, with a between deck height of 5 feet 2 inches. The Brooks, by contrast, had a deck of 5 feet 6 inches and measured 99 feet 8 inches in length by 26 feet, seven inches in width. Given its large size, the Brooks carried more than double the average of 259 people on British vessels before 1788 on its last four voyages. The selection of the Brooks may have forestalled accusations of bias, but it meant that with the abolitionist diagram showed an unusually large vessel with an unusually large number of African prisoners. Only the Brooks, ship rigging, quarter deck and forecastle and configuration of barriers to create temporary prisons for slaves reflected the typical British slaver. So listen, so what they're saying is, is that the image that was put out is, is, is in contradiction to what the sizes of the ships and stuff really was. So it's not the same image. I mean, it's not the same thing. They just went off of one image and then they've disseminated this image out to everybody as the main image, right? Ooh, he got a lot of sources, a lot of footnotes there, I'm telling you. Seas did not want to depict a standard slave ship, however. They produced the diagram to serve its opposition to Parliament's desire to regulate rather than abolish the trade. In July 1788, Parliament had passed Sir William Dobin's bill, which limited the number of Africans that British slave ships could carry according to their tonnage. Cease now had to produce a diagram that would convince the public of the inhumanity of a regulated slave trade. Mm. <laughs> Hence, he's designed the diagram to show, as Clarkson's explained, how many persons of particular heights and breasts could be hypothetically stowed in the brooks, given enough room to lie on their backs without trespassing upon the room allotted to the rest. Unknown, an unknown artist working for Cease Plymouth Committee loosely adopted Perry's measurement in December 1788 to replicate the shape of the vessels using crude rule of thumb proportions, as Wood describes. The resulting sketch was a basic deck plan, more like an outline, within which the artist drew 295 captives. The London's committee improved the accuracy of this sketch by using Perry's exact measurements and adding masts and platforms around the size of the vessel upon which enslaved people would have slept during the voyage. The two-dimensional London version lacked ropes, sails, toilets, gratings, and doors between rooms, and it has separate figures to show the vessels in cross-section. After drawing the captives, Cease discovered that the Brooks could hold 470 Africans. 100 after the drawing, after drawing the captives, after they were drawn, <laughs> Cease discovered the Brooks could hold 470 Africans, 190 men, 183 women, 70 boys, and 27 women. As Clarkson sardonically wrote, Viewers of the diagram saw the advantages of Sir William Dobin's bill because many on looking at the plate considered the regulation itself as perfect barbarism. But the Brooks had never carried that number of Africans on any of its previous voyages. It carried 650 people in 1782, 619 in 1784, 740 in 1785, and 609 in 1787. Thus, the diagram, excuse me, not thus, the diagram thus showed the number of slaves that Dobbins Act permitted the Brooks to carry, not the actual number of slaves carried on any of its four previous voyages. Okay. After joining the captains, the captives ceased discovered that the Brooks could only could hold only 470 Africans, 190 men, 
183 women, 70 boys, and 27 women. I don't know why they said that again, because I feel like they already said 183. Anyway, as Clarkson sardonically wrote, viewers of the diagram saw the advantages of Sir William Dobin's bill, because many on looking at the plate considered the regulation itself as perfect barbarism. <laughs> But the Brooks had never carried that number of Africans on any of his previous voyages. It carried 650 people in 1782, 1619, 619, 1784, 704, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, 1784, C simplified the images of the slaves to calculate how many identical people would fit in an outline of the vessel. The artist drew men, women, boys, and girls distinguished only by altering their heights by group, by adding breasts to females, and by shackling the men's ankles and wrists. In addition to being identical in height, those within each age group and gender group wear matching loin clothes and have the same appearance. Enslaved people would have differed market, um, markedly from bodies depicted in the diagram. Although slave traders sought to produce captives of a similar size and age, captives of the same gender and age group ranged in height by as much as a foot and had varying builds and hairstyles and in the case of the men were entirely naked. Moreover, none of the captives in the image appeared to be sickly or maimed, as many captives would have become on the middle passage. The Brooks diagram bore only a passing resemblance to the vessel itself. Neither of the two ceased artists had seen the ship, let alone its captives. The diagram is a pictorial representation of a table of measurements in human shapes, an acceptable methodology for drawing the schematic of a vessel, but a flawed one for showing an actual slave ship. Data from Liverpool registers. Oh, this is the last page, I think. I think I could go on. Data from the Liverpool registers confirms that the diagram fails to capture ship crowding on British vessels prior to the passage of Dobbins Act in 1788 for our method of calculating crowding. According to Perry's report, the Brooks diagram shows slave decks measuring 3,349 feet. Thus, the 470 captives depicted in the diagram each had an average of 7 feet 2 inches square. By comparison, the median degree of crowding on 251 voyages before 1789 was 6 feet 4 inches square only on and, mm, <laughs> 6 feet 4 inches square on only 68, 27%. Of those voyages were the captives less crowded than the diagram showed. <laughs> Guys. Whew. I just really don't think I have to keep saying anything because like, the article is really speaking for itself. On 114 of the 251 voyages, 45%. Captives were crammed into spaces measuring less than six square feet per person. Tight packing in the grim parallels of the trade. These 114 included all four of the Brooks voyages. Median crowding on 895 voyages between 1789 and 1799 was seven feet, four inches square, almost exactly the conditions depicted in the diagram. Between 1800, when Parliament passed, when Parliament passed, passed new regulations limiting the number of slaves that British ships could carry according to their dimension rather than their tonnage, and the trade's abolition in 1807, space per captive increased to nine feet five inches square. 
The diagram thus depicts how 726,000 captives were transported aboard British vessels after 1788, the era of the regulated slave trade. But it, but it is revealing of the experiences of only a small fraction of the 2.5 million Africans transported on British ships in the unregulated era. Cease wrote a lengthy description beneath the diagram, fearing that the schematic plans and sections of the Brooks alone would appear rather a fiction than a real representation of a slave ship. Cease admitted that the Brooks had transported 609 people on its previous voyage, contrary to the 470 captives shown in the diagram. On that voyage, Cease wrote, the room allowed them, instead of being 16 inches as in the plan, was in reality only 10 inches. The men, it added, were placed as is usual in full ships on their sides or on each other. <laughs> the text continued by describing the miseries that the Africans suffered in such a crowded conditions that excessive heat below the deck, fluxes and fevers and suffocating in the suffocating atmosphere when the portholes had to be closed in, had to be closed in bad weather. Modern users of the Brooks diagram typically displayed it without this accompanying text, isolating an image that it, even its creators knew to be deeply flawed. Modern users of the Brooks diagram typically display it without this accompanying text, isolating an image that even the creators knew to be deeply flawed, okay? The diagram alone does not indicate the number of slaves that had been imprisoned on the Brooks on any of his voyages, nor the degree to which they were crowded together. But C's strategy was more poetic license than simple obfuscation. Earmarking the Brooks diagram as a tool to convince the public that a regulated slave trade was barbarism is freely acknowledged the limitations of the image as a realistic vi visualization of the Middle Passage. So understand, like, they do not think that this, this image is a valid image. The image that y'all click on when y'all came in here, mm -hmm, that one. the one that they said they carried out people on. Contemporary images depict fully loaded ships during the trade's legal era. That is, until the image of the Nate ship Marie Serafique emerged in 2005, showing 300. <laughs> Look how he said emerged. Anyway, emerged in 2005, showing 307 enslaved people, 189 men, 60 women, 49 boys, and nine girls, imprisoned in the vessel on a voyage from Loango to Saint Domingue in 1769 and 1670. Shit, 1770. <laughs> the drawing forms part of a larger painting that depicts the Marie Seraphique. Lower hold, upper hold, slave deck, and top deck and cross section. The vessel anchored off Luango, and the tabling and the tables detailing the voyage's profits. The painting matches another image discovered in 1893 of the Marie Serafique in Saint Domingue during its 1772 73 voyage, the only extant picture of an American slave sale in the legal era of the transatlantic slave trade. A close inspection of the 2005 image reveals it to be the most accurate contemporary depiction of shipboard conditions in the transatlantic slave trade during the late 18th century, the era of the Brooks. The Marie Seraphique represents the generality of British, the general, the general, oh shit, the generality <laughs> of British and French slave ships in the second half of the 18th century than the large Brooks does. Built in Nantes and unlike most slaving vessels, specifically for the slave trade, it launched in October 1764 under the name Denacourt. The ship's layout was unremarkable. Its two decks, four castle and quarter deck were features common to most 18th century slavers, including the Brooks. Unlike the three-mast ship-rigged Brooks, however, the Marie Seraphique was snow-rigged, meaning that it only had two masts, an unusual configuration that saved cost and increased speed. The ship was 1,637 square feet, 
67 by 24 feet, 5 inches, when measured as a rectangle, were measured as a rectangle, making it just 21% smaller than the 2,064 square feet typical of Liverpool slave ships at that time, and 38% smaller than the 2,650 square feet of the massive brooks. The ship carried an average 357 people during its six voyages, during its six voyages to Africa. British vessels in the 18th century usually carried about 267 and French slavers close to 325. By comparison, the Brooks Yeah. That's the that's the image that they claim that's the one. That's the deck plane. That's y'all serious? <laughs> Child. Brown looking no ice, piece of love. Shout out to you, YK. How you doing? Thank you for uh, joining the chat. I appreciate it. Yeah, this article is about visualizing the slave ships. Yeah. The slave boats. You know, they said that this picture is flawed. You might have missed that part. Because I'm not going to keep It's 35 pages, so I'm, uh, I'm not about to. Oh, shit. Look at me. I got to get it together. Who knows? What was that page turn? Okay, there you go. Look at that. Yes, peace, Cop Aborigines. Yes, peace, y'all. So we got to understand, like, this picture was used as a part of propaganda, period. Because they wanted, they wanted to end, they wanted to make it seem like slavery was worse than what it actually was. Or that the passage was worse than what it was. So, I, look, I don't even got time. Yes, my family. Yes, y'all coming in now. Peace, y'all. E not. So, look, yes, please understand. Okay, always carry more than a double, than double the average of British vessels. The Marie Seraphique was slightly smaller than many contemporary slave vessels and oddly configured. But it was otherwise representative of slave ships sailing in the second half of the 18th century. It was also more typical of an 18th century British slaving vessel than was the Brooks. We talking about the this. No, we're talking about well, similar, but we're not really talking about that. More so about um visualizing um the slave ships and the overcrowding. And all of that. So just visualizing. That's what the article is entitled. Visualizing the Middle Passage, the Brooks, and the reality of ship crowding in the transatlantic slave trade. So yes, overstand <laughs> that, yeah, this, these authors are basically these scholars, because these are scholars here. These are scholars. And they don't agree. The book, did I read that, y'all? Hold up. Was I on page 10? Oh, shit. Look at me. <laughs> I feel like I was on page 10. But one of these pages had the boat. Oh, shit, y'all. My bad. Look at me. Because I ain't trying to hold y'all all night. I'm going to just go ahead. Okay. Because I feel like is that past page 10? Yeah, I'm past there. Okay, that's why. So here we go. So like I said, that's the deck plan of the Marie Seraphique, where they copied that image and created the image that we widely see and know today as an alleged slave ship. Okay. 
with no goddamn oh lord I'm gonna leave it alone Although the 2005 diagram of the Marie Seraphique is anonymous, the 1893 painting bears the, significant, the signature of Jean-René Lahermit, who served as second lieutenant on the voyage. By 1773, Lahermit had worked in his way through the ranks on four other slaving voyages, including the Marie Seraphique in 1769, 1770, and 1770 and 1771 expeditions. He likely had a hand in the painting of the first, I mean, of the 1769 and 70 voyage too. Through a close comparison of the 2005 and 1893 images, Gilead, creator of the Nantes Museum, contends, however, that the two portraits were not the work of Lehemet alone. Gilead surmises that Jean-Baptiste Fall Golgi, the Marie Seraphique's captain, was probably the second artist. Fautrell Golgi has served as a slave ship captain since 1765 76. I mean, 66, a position that he would have earned as a junior officer on numerous slavers of other shit. A position that he would have earned as a junior officer on numerous other slavers. Technically, Fautrell Golgi was the scion of a family of accomplished Nante artists from whom he might have inherited the skills to capture the impressive detail and perspective that is evident in both the 2005 and 1893 images. So yes, y'all gotta understand, these niggas been fraudulent since fraudulent. Yeah, they been editing. <laughs> you going on to that quick piece, girly girl? For real. On her fuckers. And then I'm going to show y'all a reimagined picture of, of what this potential situation, how these people would have been under that, on the decks. Like, there is no way. Okay. Ultra Gagi and La Hermit might have spent their spare time aboard the vessel working on paintings together, or they may have rendered them after the conclusion of the voyage. Regardless, the two men's work shows a level of skill that far exceeded that of abolitionist draftmen who executed the Brooks diagram. Moreover, both men were well acquainted with the way the enslaved people were transported on the Marie Seraphique, a vessel abroad which Fartrell, Gogi, and La Hermit spent 1,000... 1,716 days between 1769 and 1775. Yes. Fiction of, of the imagination. Ooh. All right. Gotta overstand this. For real, this shit sad. Okay. Fartrell Fartrell and Goggies and Lamarck's La Hermit's 2005 image of the Marie Seraphique slave deck contains all the features that a slave ship would have had at that time. The between deck is divided into three different compartments: one for the men ahead of the main mast, in front of the ahead of the main mast, one for the boys amidship, and another a fit for the women. This configuration of spaces, which the Brooks diagram also shows, was ubiquitous in the six, in the 18th century slave trade. The forecastle of the Marie Seraphique, which is sealed by a wooden wall, wooden wall contains barrels, billets of wood, and a portion of spritz sail. Although this area appears to be reserved for the men on the Brooks, the use of the forecastle for storage was common. The base of the Marie Seraphique capstan runs across the middle of the men's area, forming an awkward wooden barrier across which some male slaves are slumped. The wooden walls within the room, demarcated by black and white checkered lines in the painting, do not run in clean perpendicular lines as they do in the brooks. In the brooks. Instead, they form two tight zones around the hatches leading below the deck, barriers that prevented the male slaves from breaking into the hold. The space between the men's and women's room is a mere five or six feet wide, whereas in the Brooks diagram, it appears to be wider and filled with enslaved boys. 
the narrowness of the Mary, the Marie Seraphinic, Seraphic room is due to the storage of sails, ropes, and tools enclosed by bare walls on the men's side and by walls with doors on the women's side. Platforms just from the side of the women's room do not run to the do not run to the aft of the vessel because of the cabinets and lockers located there. The men's room features no platforms at all. The Marie Seraphique appears to have been a sailing vessel converted into a floating prison through the modification of the cluttered space between the decks as contrasted to the empty spaces shown in the Brooks diagram. Look. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know why people ain't been covering Eltis. Peace, Stephanie. Peace, peace. Yes. Halito, Oseo, all that. Yes. These people liars, y'all. The Marie Seraphic diagram accurately captures the complexities of a slave ship's between deck, which crewmen's altered to accommodate varying proportions of men, women, and children. Harry's report reveals, for example, that Liverpool merchants adjusted the rooms and platforms to hold greater or smaller numbers of men and women, of men or women, depending on a vessel's destination in Africa. One of the vessels from the Windward Coast, where captains brought significant numbers of enslaved males, had, put, had platforms in the men's and boys' room, but not in the women's room. However, one of the vessels returning from the Bight of Biafra, where captains expected to purchase large number of females, had platforms only in the women's room. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. I had yeah earlier. They broke down like the like comparisons of the sizes of the ship. That they claimed and then like the picture and in comparison to those so yeah they did talk about that i'm just kind of moving along because it is 35 pages i don't plan to go through the whole thing tonight you know i just wish i could have had more people you know pull up but we're gonna still chop it up though because i mean i still got a couple other things that i want to kind of run back through like about dna and all that other stuff but yeah this was a very interesting read for me so just to understand like the severity of what they have done. This image was a part of propaganda, period, even back then. So okay. One of the vessels from the Windward Coast, where captains brought significant numbers of enslaved males, had platforms in the men's and boys' room, but not in the women's room. However, one of the vessels returning from the right of Biafra, where captains expected to purchase large numbers of females, had platforms only in the women's room. The Marie Seraphique often, I mean, the Marie Seraphique outfitters may have adopted the ship to imprison more women than men, but more likely the lack of platforms in the men's room was a result of its low ceiling, which made platforms impracticable. Y'all hear that? <laughs> As Liverpool's captain, Robert Norris, told Parliament, it is sometimes is the case that there is only a platform in the women's room because a break in the deck made the men's room lower and no platform. The configuration described by Norris is clear in the 1893 image of the Marie Seraphique, which shows the women's room to have a higher ceiling than the men's room. Moreover, the cluttered aft section of the women's room as shown in the Marie Seraphic image, likely prevented the construction of platforms, another regular feature of other slave ships. Fautel Gargui and La Hermit depicted their African prisoners in remarkable detail. The male slaves appeared as they would have been on the vessel, completely naked, their right leg joined to the left leg of another man by a bar-like shackle, the women wear checkered blue loin clothes and no shackles. Most of the captives lie in a parallel rows, as in the Brooks diagram, because as numerous witnesses described, 
whip bearing crewmen led the Africans below deck in long lines from the main deck every night and then forced them into position. The set, mm, the 307 captives are shown to occupy just six feet, three inches square per person. <laughs> you, <laughs> okay. The 307, the 307 captives are shown to occupy just six feet, three inches square per person within an inch of the average crowding on Liverpool voyages between 1782 and 1788. Median equals six feet, four inches. Unlike the supine rows of slaves in the Brooks image, the captives on the Marie Seraphique are pressed side by side against their neighbors locked spoon ways as the Brooks surgeon described before parliament. This is what they saying before parliament. Moreover, individual captives are packed into the small spaces where rows of them could not fit, such as around the capstan, on the edges of walls, and even atop ledges. Almost all of the captives lie on their right side, a position thought preferable for the action of the heart. As one 19th century slave ship sailor put it, with their right arm permit, with their right arm pinioned beneath those of their neighbor, and their left arm deployed as a pillow stretch above their head or draped across their chest. Though in rows, they look like people in a crowded prison, with their legs, arms, and heads tangled together, and their bodies stretched uncomfortably across wooden beams or crammed into corners. Bruh, the depiction of the individual slaves on the Marie Seraphique is truer to life than in the schematic Brooks image. Unlike the clones in the Brooks picture, the slaves in the Marie Seraphique differ in height, build, and appearance. In the men's room, tall male captives occupy the widest sides of the vessel, where small teenagers and boys are pressed in the smaller corners. I mean, into the excuse me, y'all. Whereas the small teenagers and boys are pressed into smaller intervening spaces, likely as the crewmen assigned them. The women sleep atop cabinets, shelves, and narrow ledges, their heads and bodies emerging in, from the bottom of the platforms in a disorderly fashion. Some women was wearing, some women are wearing beads around their ankles, and others have changed and loin into a long cloth wrap that runs from Naval to knees. One woman in a long piece of cloth fashioned into a skirt nurses a baby at her breast. Europeans often purchase mothers and their infants and even pregnant women who gave birth aboard. Another woman rests on a narrow ledge about the nurse. Mm. Y'all hear this, y'all? Another woman rests on a narrow ledge above the nursing woman's head. A small child at her feet, perhaps her daughter, a neighbor hangs her legs over the same ledge. Seven captives wrapped in blue coughs lie in agony within walled in watch, walled in hatchways. The sickly captives, whom the crew tried to quarantine from their shipmates. The accompanying views of the Marie Seraphique upper decks and hold and of the ship at the anchor in Africa include additional details that shed further light on the slaves experiences, especially the crew's concerted efforts to prevent insurrections. Wooden water barrels filled the hold, each fixed in place by billets of wood that were used to cook, <laughs> that were used to cook the slaves twice daily meals in a boiler child aft of the main mass the beans rice manioc flour and bread are depicted in storage compartments and aft of the hold mind y'all this he is talking about what's in the picture okay talk about the picture <laughs> that's what he's talking about he ain't talking about this happening actually he's talking about this is on a wooden boat he did <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Listen. 
Listen. For real. Oh my God. They, they talking about, the, like, and, like, that's how much I see in the Marie Seraphine. They talking about the picture, okay? I hope y'all follow me. If y'all don't, let me know. Yay. Yeah, this is what these people said that they was doing for these people. Lying like shit. Imprisoned in the Marie Seraphics between decks throughout the night, the captains would have heard the water sloshing in the barrels below, as well as the rats scurrying among the food and water. In fair weather, the crewmen would have brought the captives onto the main deck in the morning through thick iron granted iron graded hatchways, one of which is shown open in the diagram of the of the above deck. The above deck on the Marie Seraphique was not in empty space as it was on the brooks, but rather an area filled with water, with water barrels, food, trade goods, cage livestock, and the witches and pulleys needed to work the ships. Listen to this, y'all. They had food, trade, I mean, food, uh, they had water barrels, they, would, they had cage livestock, they didn't lie. Y'all had all of that on that little ass uh, depiction of that slave boat? Stop lying. And they drew all of that shit on that picture. The audacity. Seriously, seriously, y'all. This is what we up against. They talk about the rats, too. The rats were scurrying in among the food and the water. There was rats on the ship. <laughs> no, seriously. Like, I, it was rats. You can get some rats sometimes, y'all. Maybe on the land. Where was the rats at? I don't mean to be all loud. <laughs> rats pee their history. I hate they motherfucking ass. Ugh, they nasty. Nasty looking at all that. Ugh. If they were the, the crewmen would have... Yeah, I already read all of that. Yeah, we down here. Because all... The above deck on the Marie Seraphique was not an empty space, as it was on the brooks, but rather an area filled with water barrels, food, trade goods, cage livestock, and the witches and pulleys needed to work the ship. Iron rings along the edges of the gratings along the among blah. Iron rings along the edges of the gratings mark where two long deck chains would have ran across the length of the foredeck. The crew would have locked enslaved men into the chain as soon as they were brought in deck, keeping them confined between barrels to the side and the high wide wooden hip. La, 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 la. Forgive me, y'all. Keeping them confined between the barrels to the side and the high wide wooden barrier. Oh, oh, Lord. Okay. Ooh, I'm going. I'm, I'm going further than what I said. A man ships a midships called the Barricado showed in the 1893 image a measure designed to forestall insurrection. Although the smaller number of women would have been would have made more room, would have had more room on the quarter deck and would not have been chained, they would have been crowded by the crew of 41 men. Listen. Although the smaller number of women would have had more room on the quarter deck and would not have been chained, they would have been crowded by the crew of 41 men, almost all of whom stayed behind the barricado in case the men on the other side staged a rebellion. Here it is. As the artist views the vessel standing off, as the artist's view of the vessel standing offshore at Luongo shows, the Marie Seraphique's deck with its 307 slaves would have been oppressively congested. <laughs> as the artist's view of the vessel standing offshore at Luongo shows, the Marie Seraphique's deck with its 307 slaves 
would have been oppressively congested. The captives appear in the image as a dense crush of people that must have swayed and surged with the rolling of the vessel, their heads just showing over the gunwales, shielded from the sun by two large sails. Two, two sails with 370 people on a boat, and then they have two large sails. Listen, listen, listen. We got we to stop, okay? We got to stop. We have to stop what we be doing, okay? Like, we really do. Like, y'all just got to stop. Oh. Okay. The numerous images of the Marie Seraphine most likely painted from life thus captured the vessel and her slaves with a level of detail and complexity that far exceeds that the uh that far exceeds that of the simplistic brooks diagram by including images of the different levels of the vessel and a view of her and a view of her at anchor the artists convey a sense of the marie seraphic as a functioning slave ship packed tightly with hundreds of individuals Although the Marie Seraphic's diagram depicts enslaved people, supine as would suggest for the Brooks, it includes myriad details that reveal the vessel as a true floating prison. Hmm. Ship crowding before and after the 18th century. The transatlantic slave trade had existed for 250 years before the Marique Seraphique was rendered for posterity, and it continued under vastly different conditions until 1867. No illustration of slaves. Okay, that's the La Marie Seraphique, y'all. So y'all see that right there? Plan, profit, distribute, whatever. Y'all get the point. Look at that. All this is down there. And then they turn around and then it's all the people. I know everybody was dead on that motherfucker. This ain't no way. Ain't no way. And then another other one right there, y'all. Look at that. That, that was y'all. Like, y'all was at the bottom of that. Pan Africans. <laughs> oh yeah, let me plug in my phone. Oh, let me get my battery off. Shit, hold on. <laughs> hey, Pan Africans. That's serious. Like for real. Y'all really buying into this nerd game? Y'all, this this bullshit? For 307 people? Oh. Tell me where it makes sense at. Put a one in the chat if you feel what I'm saying. Seriously, put a sunflower in that bitch if y'all feel what I'm saying. Like, come on now. And we out here, we not investigating none of this stuff. But we want to keep talking about, oh, or y'all, y'all just don't want, y'all just ashamed of who y'all are. Woo -hoo -hoo. Anybody ashamed? We, we love who we are, and that's why we want to know the truth. Like, they had to have supplies, everything. Everything on a wooden boat. What about the sharks? Because I never even think about the sea animals, you know what I'm saying? The sharks and all the dangerous animals in the ocean. Bitch, you, you mean to tell me somebody ain't get eat by a shark? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm being funny right there, but for real. Hello, old man. How you doing? Look at this, y'all. Y'all was at the bottom of that jump. Three, all oh, three hundred and seventy, y'all. Stop what y'all doing. Stop it. 
Okay, bullshits before the 18th century appear to have survived. The earliest one is seven is a 1741 ex voto painting of the La Rochelle slave ship, Les Saphir. It has an ID number and everything attached to it. But the first Atlantic, the first, but the first transatlantic captives must have traveled under conditions that their successors could not have imagined. We and Eagle recently collected data for almost 100 ships that arrived in Puerto Rico directly from Africa between 1520 and 1540. On average, they carried just 16 slaves. Such ships would have been galleons or carrocks with high forecastles and the mix of a square and Latin sails, not markedly different from the Portuguese vessels that sailed the Pacific and Indian Oceans. They would have set out from I the Iberian Peninsula carrying European merchandise and Spanish migrants before picking up slaves, all originally from Upper Guinea. And he talked about that a little bit too, like that little Upper Guinea piece, but they ain't really, man, that shit ain't really come up until later though. So they haven't really proved like much of that. Because I know when he wrote it in his other joint, he was pretty much saying that the Upper Guinea, the new Upper Guinea shit didn't come up until later. The Upper New Guinea and all that, y'all. So. Yeah, shout out to y'all. What's up, J.A. Young? Hey, King Serpentine. Thank you. Like it, share, subscribe. Like it to your um, pages if you guys can. You know, let your people know that I'm, you know, I'm up rocking. Try to stick to the information. And information only. And you know, yeah. So let's keep it going. All originally, all originally from Upper uh damn, all originally from Upper Guinea in the Canary Islands, with crews and immigrants greatly outnumbering them. Male slaves might have traveled in conditions not radically different from those of free migrants, barring perhaps. Shackles. All right. Somebody. Ooh. By the mid 1550s, the average number of slaves on board began to match those on the Seraphic in Brooks, though the trade was by no means the same. The original Atlantic slave traders, mainly Portuguese, maintained a system in which, prior to embarkation, slaves were gathered and particularly housed on shore in fortified locations. Vessels could spend a year or more on the African coast, frequently with few slaves on board, if not totally empty. <laughs> Ships did not take slaves aboard until they had reached their full complement, which would normally be just prior to departure. On islands and in coastal settlements, the Portuguese created a secure environment in which to trade and hold captives for extended periods of time. No other European power was able to achieve such a security outside of its forts. Outside the walls of its forts, excuse me, which were located primarily in the coast, which were located primarily in the Gold Coast and in the Bight of Benin, in the extensive French, Dutch, and English slave trades in the Bights and north of the Congo River, the vessels were trading platform. Yeah, they should have been straight because. Yeah, because they because Africa is way closer to um yeah Africa's a little closer to like what you talk about Spain Spanish their captains interacting directly with African suppliers. No shipboard trade at a single African embarkation point matched the two point eight million slaves that left from the Luanda the hub of Portuguese slave trade. The Portuguese advantage is one of the largely unexplored factors explaining why they dominated every era of the Euro-American slave trade until the last half of the 18th and for the most 19th century. 
The slave subjugated to Portuguese transatlantic system underwent two fundamentally different experiences from those taken away in the French, Dutch, and English systems. First, they spent less time on board a slave ship, and second, they spent less time at sea. A French, British, and Dutch slaver between 1640 and 1807 typically received its first captive 80 days after leaving home port. It's first captive, y'all. I am tired of these people. Y'all ain't seen YK come back yet. He was talking all that about, I was proving the African slave trade. What is I'm proving? <laughs> all right. Accumulated a full complement of captives took another 140 days. And the transatlantic, and blah, and the transatlantic passage added 73 days. Another week often elapsed prior to the sale of the captives in the Americas. <laughs> Hence, the first captives purchased generally entered an almost empty vessel where they spent a mean of seven months. Ships then became increasingly crowded as the captains continued to purchase enslaved people for the next several months. Severe crowding below the deck usually began two or three weeks before departure. Y'all hear that? Two or three weeks. Niggas was down there for three weeks before you left. Y'all crazy as hell. Severe crowding below the decks usually began two or three weeks before departure when captains shoved in groups of slaves to make up the ship's complement as one British officer candidly described. All right. Precise data for the Portuguese vessels are lacking, given that their time of arrival on the African coast does not correlate well with the date when the slaves first came aboard. But in the light of the evidence above, and but in light of the above evidence, captives would likely have boarded a vessel together and immediately been crushed together. So far, so far as time at sea is concerned, Portuguese slave ships brought their cargo to Brazil, the part of the Americas that was closest to Africa. The British, French, and the Dutch counterparts faced voyages that took, on average, 50% longer to reach their major markets in the Caribbean than did, than did the... Portuguese voyages to Brazil at every quarter century between 1676 and 1807. Africans would consequently endure ship crowding aboard Portuguese vessels for less than two months. Luso African slave traders were well aware of the shorter voyages times, and as slave traders were well aware, oh shit, and as Miller writes, crammed as many as, as many slaves as possible between the decks, their counterparts in the British and French trades endured both longer periods aboard vessels on the African coast, where they became increasingly crowded as the ship filled with prisoners, and then much longer voyages on those packed vessels across the Atlantic. Sure. How different was the slave experience aboard these Portuguese vessels from that shown in the Brooks and Marie Seraphique diagrams? Both images show a key feature on the 18th century slave ships, a barricado at midship, allowing the crew to feed the entire human cargo on deck during the day. Remarkably, historians have not interrogated when slavers began to employ the barricado, but no evidence supports its use in either the Portuguese trade or in the pre-1700 slave trades of other nations. So that shit's capped too. Sandoval, who collected information from hundreds of Africans in the early 17th century, Cartagena wrote what is probably the best ethnological trees treatise about early modern Africa, included a description of the conditions aboard the slave ships. According to Sandoval, slaves were chained together and locked in the hold and closed off from the, both the sun and the moon, lying with one person's head at another person's feet. 
Scholars interpret him to mean that the male adults were held below deck throughout the voyages. Although an abundance of evidence for the 18th century contradicts this notion with the important exception of the Portuguese trade. In his extensive examination of the 18th and 19th century Portuguese slave trade, for example, Miller noted that captives were tightly packed below deck and segregated by sex. The crew brought up small lots or lots of 10 or so slaves for feeding during the day, but all slaves enjoyed even this modest relief since the clutter on the deck of many ships left no room for feeding above board. Apparently, Portuguese slavers did not require a barricado because they had less to fear from revolt. Man. Given that the captains were brought on deck in small groups, hence the image of the Brooks and even the Marie Seraphique have limited value in depicting the Africans' experience in the Portuguese slave trade, or for that matter, in the British or French slave trade before the 18th century. So what is he saying here, guys? We cannot trust this motherfucking image, bitch, that they keep showing. We can't trust it. The illegal phase of the slave trade after 1807 introduced even more, even more variety into the shipping practices of the slave trade as British naval patrols gradually extended their blockade of the African coast, the Portuguese strategy of holding slaves on land prior to embarkation became only feasible method of shipping slaves. Accordingly, strategy became a device for avoiding the intentions of British naval vessels that at least until the inclusion of equipment clauses in anti-slave anti trade treaties in 1830 could detain a slave ship only if it's only if it had captives on board. <laughs> Moreover, both improved ship design and British development of its anti-slave trade squadron for slave traders to employ faster vessels to outrun native cruisers and to transport what they saw as high value perishable human cargoes as quickly as possible. Mm. Rapid development of shipping technology culminated in the employment of yacht or clipper type and later steam powered vessels. Later, later, just as today, the ratio of sail to hull, to hull as well as the shape of the hull determined speed compared to the Marie Seraphie and the Brooks slave ship holes from the 1810s onward had a straighter profile, fewer decks, and a sharper entry into the water and raked masts that support a greater sail area. Okay. I think I can get y'all. Yeah, let me just stop sharing for a second. So listen, we need to over, 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 over understand what the fuck going on here, okay? That image, the one that y'all see when y'all come in here, is Cap. Is Cap. Okay? And give me a second because I'm going to need to do something real quick. Say I'm hustling and I'm grinding. I'm making moves with my money on my mind And I can't fall short, no, no. always go, go Keep it down, slow-mo, oh, oh Say I'm hustling and I'm grinding I'm making moves with my money on my mind And I can't fall short, no, no, always go, go Keep it down, slow-mo, oh, oh Say I'm hustling and I'm grinding I'm making moves with my money on my mind And I can't fall short, no, no, always go, go Keep it down, slow-mo, oh, oh Say I'm hustling and I'm grinding
So look at look at this image, y'all. Look at it. Look at it. They ain't really expect us to believe this shit. Seriously. Like we out here believing this. Wish I could make it bigger. We out here believing this. Look at this. Oh, that's all y'all can give me. Plan of the lower deck with the stowage of 292 slaves. 130 of these being stowed under the shelves and shown in figure eight. What's that? Eight and five? I don't know what that shit say, y'all. Fuck. But y'all get where I'm coming from. Look at that. They drew this so well. Women, men, boys. Where's the girls? Everybody was just look at look at him. He kind of on the side right there. Look at Cubs. Y'all about to man. I really don't got time to be playing. Like seriously, like what y'all really think about that though? Man, we would be fucking right. Hey, look at this. Like all right here too. Look at I miss you, bitch. Let me get bigger. So hold on, let me go to the top. Cause that's what it's supposed to look like right there. This is the joint we was laughing at <laughs> earlier last uh, last night. <laughs> look at this. Oh, I'm still on that same article, but I just wanted to kind of throw it to this image because oh, this shit is insane right here, y'all. Okay. Of course. Of course. Look at that. The insanity, y'all. We gotta cut this out right here. This is this is there is no way you're gonna survive this. And then they're talking about a boat with no fucking sails. Where's the sails? And then they disseminating this picture all around, making people uh believe that this is our story. That we with this bullshit? Like, uh-uh. Enough is enough. You ready to go to bed? You finally going to bed? Okay. It's 10.59. I said I was going to sleep by 10 o'clock. I went a little over 10. Okay. Well, I love you. I love you, too. Well, I hope you have a good night. I thought that you were going to hang up for a while, but it's not. We just, I love you. Uh uh. Bye, Ryan. No, no. Bye, Ryan. Don't stop. Don't stop. We was doing good. Come shut my door, boo. I'll come in here in a moment. I'm not going to be much longer. All right. So y'all see this? Y'all see that? Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, Charissa, you, you need to get back to it. You was on this. <laughs> y'all, your ancestors was on this joint. Got no sale. But they was... <laughs> All right, man. Look, look, look. Okay, hold on. That's not the right one. Give me a second. I'm gonna... <laughs> Hold up. I'm going to put it back up, y'all. But I got to get it together first. Because I don't need to be showing everything in my arsenal. Because I got hella shit. But yes, y'all see that? I'm going to go back to that. Hold up. <laughs> Let me show that shit one more time. <laughs> this is the image that they put out there for everybody. Look at that. And look, that's how y'all, that's how that's how they said we was. We was crammed at the bottom. Like they they still had room for all their stuff on this wooden boat. 300 people. That wood must have been some wood of the Lord. <laughs> like, listen. 
that must have been some supersonic wood, some super, I don't know. No, y'all, because I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. So give me a second, because I need to uh take care of something real quick. Shout out to the mama chief. Yeah, you be quiet when big mama speak. What she gave us, it's a part of me. It flows through my arteries. Even on that journey, that love grows how the garden be. The first to teach us when we sick, the first to heal us. Mama's boy, yeah, you know, her pride and joy. Soul food, yeah, you know, I'm an enjoy. Calm you down just by the sound of a voice. There isn't another feeling inside. When they cheering you on, that you game. And you feeling the pride. You and your siblings fighting. She gon' make you put them feelings aside. She can't lead you down the road, but she can give you the guide. Where you think I get that blissful look in my eyes? I need a side of ice cream with Ben Ma's apple pie. You know for sure for Mama Chief, you know I'ma ride. Cause we all need a Mama Chiefs. Yeah, we all love a Mama Chiefs. The greatness, the patience, the foundation, the knowledge passed down. So many generations, our motivation. I just wanna thank you for my creation. Cause we all love a Mama Chiefs. Yeah, we all need a Mama Chiefs. Yeah, we all rap for Mama Chief. The dedication, I seen your tears at my graduation. Now look, Ma, your boy that made it. You the reason I'm one of the greatest. Yeah, cause we all need a Mama Chiefs. Yeah, we all love a Mama Chiefs. Yeah, we all rap for Mama Chief. Now be quiet, let Big Mama speak. Shasa, I, I don't thank you, but no thank you, honey. Okay. <laughs> like, thank you, but no thank you, because you I don't know what you be on. Like, one minute we cool, the next minute we not. Like, listen, I don't play love-hate relationships. So I'm telling you right now. All right. Peace, peace, straight smoke. What's going on with a Sharice? Nothing much, nothing much. Just trying to show people how unrealistic this whole slave, this whole fucking diagram is. The Brooks diagram that they've used to, de to, to depict our journey, our alleged journey. Okay. That they ain't proved nothing. Like, okay. I'm over it. Seriously, let me get my baby his version. Right so, all, all, all them was just under the under the bow, and they just was just what just there, huh? Man, I gotta find that picture of it reimagined. Like, I'm gonna have to yeah, find it. They got they got a picture of the slave boat being reimagined. Of course oh, they do. Motherfucker. They gotta reinforce the, the tutelage, don't that they? Bullshit. Hold up, let me stop sharing. Y'all gotta see that shit. Hold up, y'all. I'm gonna look for this. What the hell? So, what you think, Straight Smoke? Did you get a chance to listen to me uh talk about the article? It's about uh 35 pages, so I got uh through about 20 of them. Yeah. My, so wife had you on, my wife had you on the other 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 thing while I was still doing what I was doing, you know oh, what I'm saying? Period. Hey, yeah, that's what we do. That's what we do. That's what hey, we do. Sis. We are a team. Period. Been a team for almost yes. three years. Oh, you should see me smiling from ear to ear. Peace to you, sis. Peace and love. She can hear you. Yes. <laughs> she just looked over at, at me and gave me the little smile and whatnot. Yeah. Now she want to roll a joint. <laughs> okay. I'm uh, serious, you know. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna What's lie. That? I'm saying the whole thing that it's always going to show is how they have to reconstruct the narrative of the bullshit. Yes. They have to. Yes. Did you they see Jesse Jackson resigning? Did I see who? Did you see Jesse Jackson resigning? Oh, yeah. From what? Oh, what's his current job? From being from being your black leader. Fuck him. Did you hear me? 
I'm serious. Yeah. All bullshit aside. All bullshit yeah. aside. And you know who he named his successor? Al Sharpton. Kamala Harris. How she is this? She's not. How do I feel about her? To me, she's not an American. She's not like she's a first generation. I feel. Did you hear what I said? What? Jesse Jackson. All the black people that love Jesse Jackson. He's stepping down. And he just named his successor Kamala Harris mm -hmm. as the black leader ship of America. We know that. Did you hear me? I hear you. Just she ain't my motherfucking leader. That's Shawshank. She might be your leader. You know what I'm saying? She she's not full black people. At all. She has I never know, been. I, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, and I know it'd be hard because I don't really like to talk about politics for real because I know, you know, people, you know, got they, you know, I don't I don't want my opinions oh, to be used against me. But sorry. This, ain't, this is not politics. This this is a coalition. <laughs> this is a coalition, you know, rainbow push coalition. That's what this is in reference to. Rainbow push coalition. I hear you. It's, it seems so awkward that the man that backed pan Africanism is turning it over to a pan African. But he is a what is he? They say he got some chata on him. He's like a chata, uh, Jesse Jackson. I, that's what I heard. I don't, you know, don't get me that what? Mind. That Jesse what? Jackson got some shots on him. I mean, so doesn't um, a family oh, judge that everybody talks about, doesn't it? Funny how yeah. they always change their story about certain things. Huh? Fuck his back days. He I came to my high school back in the day. Look at me talk about back in the day, okay? Oh, uh, you want me to pull up my 91, uh, my 89, 9, uh, 89, 90, 91, and 92 shit for you? Well, Jesse Jackson wild ass and what he was doing, I think I got some information on that too. I guess the one thing that nobody's going to pull up is that how he got caught with a trans, he got caught with a uh, transformer. <laughs> Let me tell you something about that. Just saying. And, 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 and I'm going to keep it cute, big bro, when I say this. But it just doesn't surprise me. It doesn't. And you'll be surprised how many, unfortunately, how many of, you know, a lot of men in, enjoy that, you know, on the low. On the low. <laughs> I, look, listen. <laughs> like, we got to start being real about some things. Because every time we don't address certain things, you know, it, it turns into like this whole taboo type of cliche. Oh, you know, we're acting like it didn't happen type stuff. And and that's where it got to stop now. Like, you know, I, you know, they, you know, like they be on some ditty. And that's it. <laughs> Diddy no ditty, All right. okay? All right. How about this? Sharice, do me a solid. Mm -hmm. Do me a solid. Play it again. Play Operation Mockingbird, Don Lemon. Play it again. Okay. That's too cold for anybody not to understand that. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people are not going to agree with this, but. It's not a question of if, but when there's going to be a chemical or biological attack on the American people. And what is their solution? They say, give up our rights, submit to Big Brother. Uh, don't get the vaccine, you can't go to the supermarket. Don't have the vaccine, you don't show it, you can't go to the ball game. Don't have the vaccine, you can't go to work. Don't have the vaccine, can't come here, no shirt, no shoes, no service. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel like, you know what that whole... That whole situation made me feel like it made me feel like like I wasn't in control of my life. That's what that made me feel like. It made me, it showed me that I wasn't in control of my life. 
the or fact did it? Hmm? Or did it? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know, it showed me I can get it back. No, but it showed you one or two things. Are you in control or not? We not clearly. Okay, yes, you are. Change. Yes, you are. I, well, I feel like I'm in control now because I know the truth. Well, you gotta but, understand that I know that you know that you're in control because you know how to say no to something that you know is not right. Mm -hmm. Man, that's why I made that. I just feel like it's always easier said than done because I know a lot of people was put under the press to get the jab. Oh, don't worry like that no more, okay? Oh, okay. Say hokey pokey or something. Hokey pokey. Uh, yeah, hokey pokey. You know, uh, turn yeah, stuff around. I, 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 I called him in the jab, but no, don't do that. My brother John Briggs. No, I'm trying to keep you extra safe. Yes, the I ain't lying. I'm trying okay. to keep you extra safe. Extra. A hokey, a hokey pokey dokey. Hokey pokey. Poke your ass, nigga. Right, right, <laughs> right. I'm trying to keep you extra safe. Nah, you right. Respect. Y'all, the panel is open. Uh, if you all want to come and, you know, join. Yes, please turn on your notifications. Check the chicken how many roots. Listen, y'all. And I also wanted to make an announcement, too, while we're all here. Bless y'all. I'm going to be having some guests in the upcoming weeks. Um, I'm getting some things together with a few people in the community that y'all might know and some y'all might not know, but we, I'm going to bring them to y'all and, you know, I got some smoke coming. I got some fire coming and y'all really be on the lookout for that because it's a lot of people in this paradigm. It's a lot of people that can express themselves. Um, you know, I'm in talks with misinformation, you know, you know, just to drop her name because she's a cool girl and. You know, I'm excited to work some things out with her. We're going to get together. I'm also going to get together with a college professor, you know, and he's going to just come on and discuss some things in regard to ethnic studies and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah like we're, we're getting the education over here. Like, yeah, you know, I talk my stuff. I like to laugh and joke. And, you know, I throw my articles up there here and there. But I know that there's always room for us to learn and grow and come into information that we didn't once know. So, you know, look out for these beautiful uh, indigenous people, you know, some people who claim Afro-indigenous or whatever. I don't agree with that, but some people do, you know, say Afro-indigenous or whatever. So it will be a lot of different, um, you know, perspectives and different, you know, different turns I'm going to be taking in the community. And I just want y'all to stay tuned. Um, I'm also graduating college in a month. So I have a lot of stuff going on in the month of April, like. I have work to do, finals. Yeah, my shit is backed up. I'm gonna, have to send you, I'm gonna have to send you some flowers. Yes, yes. I am graduating college. It's a big deal. I'm very, very excited about this accomplishment. And um, yeah, like I'll let everybody know. I'll you know, uh, you know, pull up and you know, maybe not that weekend, but probably after that, you know. <laughs> That's Mother's Day and all of that. So you know, the girl might be, you know, hanging with her family and stuff like that. But after that, y'all, it's me and my indigenous family right here on YouTube. Her hey. head. I love it. I love it. I'm glad yeah. to hear that we have those guests coming up and things of that nature. Yeah, it, only it only solidifies one thing. You're looking for every perspective of truth. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's all. And that's all we should be doing. That's all we should be doing. I agree. I love that light in you, girl. Thank I you. love that light in you. Man, you know what? This that's what this is about. Like this information, this paradigm. You know, I'm about to go back to this because that's when you shot son. I, I want you to punch your punch your ancestor out on this motherfucker. Good luck. <laughs> We're small fish when you need them. That's right. All I can say is this: like, honestly, honestly, I, I can't get over. It. Honestly, uh, just look at that. Look Do at you it. think it's possible? Like, just like, using simple real. rationality with no bias. Look at that. Come on, I'm man. All on the all in the crease. Look at this. Look at that. Where's that, that boat right at? Here. Where's that boat at? 
He, hold on. Let me read the top. Where's that boat at? Stowage of the British slave ship Brooks under the regulated slave trade act of 1788. Where's that so boat at? They, this is the depiction. I'm trying to, I, I can't hold up. Shit. Where is that I'm, boat? Is it British? I'm, I'm, no, 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 what no. You mean, where is it at? Where is that boat at? Oh, today? Where is it sunk at? Shit, I've been looking for it. You, you uh, understand yeah. where I'm coming from? <laughs> hmm? I said, I've been looking for it. Let, no let that be the it. reason. Huh? Let it be the reason. Keep on. Look at this. They got the people up here. Look at this. Look at this. This is awful. And they let this image get out to everybody. And for them to even try to make it seem like this is wasn't it. This was a horrific event that was going on in in this manner. That's why he also brought up the fact that the average slave ship would have had like six like six people. That to me makes more sense. So yeah, oh, so I almost got blocked. He on his number page. It came right. <laughs> I said I'm gonna go pay attention to the chat no more. That's hilarious. Shika harmony roots peace, baby. Yeah, you right. 100%. Go ahead, straight smoke. Give me more because, you know, we, we can bounce off each other. And yeah. And if you want, can you send that over to uh, Big Bro? What What do around. you want me to do? Uh, if you if you can send that link over to Big Bro if he's around. OTK. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, if you want to chime in at any point, it ain't got to be now. You know, whenever he get, whenever he feel like it. Peace, y'all. Let me go ahead and just take the time real quick before straight smoke. You know, take over. Um, and just let's we gonna we gonna really crank on this picture, y'all. Because we need to understand this bullshit. This is out of control. This is out of control. So let's go. Big dog Philly OG peace, baby. Dark Moon Goddess. Hey boo. My man Niji Superior. Of course, straight smoke. Jeremy Royster. Hey family. Chief Crazy Overstanding. Salute. My man, Big Dog Philly OG. DC in this bitch. Talk your talk media. What's up, Greedy? <laughs> YK, how you doing, honey? Brown looking no ice. That's the only way to have it. Okay. Copper Apparitionies. Peace and love to you. My family, Enoch 0407. How you? My motherfucking girl. Girly girl all day, baby. Got that knowledge for y'all, too. Stephanie Burke, peace, baby. Peace to y'all again. Yep. King Serpent Time, how you doing? Nature Gazer, Atanchan, CTG, what's up? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Jai Young, how you doing? Drake Cos Music, how are you? I hope you come back. I ain't seen you in the chat in a minute. Come on back if you can. Child, how you doing, Shawson? I'm trying to, I'm trying my best with you. But like, I think you don't understand, okay? Because no <laughs> one is denying African <laughs> mixture. No one's denying that Africans were in America or came to America at some point. But what you fail to realize is that it was free Negroes here. Okay? And nothing, nothing is going to change that. <laughs> we were original here, just like we were original in Asia, original in Africa, original in whatever part of this world you wanna you wanna name. So this even is even Australia, even Australia. Oh, I'll show you Aborigines. Come on, I have man. an original picture of them from 1993. Don't make, do Don't make me do it. I got an original picture of the Australian Aborigines. And you know what the man told me? Because okay, so the, what the man told me was when he took that picture, he went to he went to Australia, but he wasn't near where the Aborigines were. And he said he kept asking around. It's a white man, y'all. So he asking around, like, you know, where the Australian Aborigines at? He said that they were way on the countryside, way, way, way over on the countryside, right? He said he got on his bus miles off the countryside. He got on the bus three days. So he can get up there where they was at and get them pictures of them kids that was still there in 93. But they never be down there in the city park. They're never down there. They don't go down there. So, you know, it's, it's man, come on now. 
Come on. Come on. Y'all don't want me to do this. You, you don't want me to do this. <laughs> Check it out, really me, Roots. <laughs> Peace, baby. Oh, there it goes, small fish. Hey, hey, small fish. <laughs> Come hit the hey, link, hit the bro. Link. Hey, do, do you see the link? Post it again, huh? Uh, yeah, let me get it three. again. Hold, I'm about to stop yeah. sure it's covering the jank. Yeah, we let ain't playing with these. We, hey, we're not fish. playing no more. It's over with. The age of ignorance is over with. Tired of y'all. I'm done. The age no of way. ignorance is over with. This is a picture they drew. This is a picture they drew. Get it go OTK piece. Yes, y'all hit the link if y'all want, man. We up here. Let's party. A straight smoke. You know what you should have did? You were supposed to send me that Bailey Oso, though. Like, I guess I'm going to have to play him off the YouTube, off the Humble. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Give me two seconds. Yeah, help me out with that. And then Give me two seconds. Shaking bacon on their ass. Hey, y'all. Peace to everybody. Shout out to all of y'all in here in the chat tonight. Yes, I was covering an article, excuse me, an article called Visualizing the Transatlantic Slave, the Middle Passage. Visualizing the Middle Passage, excuse me, y'all. And the ship crowding. Okay. When we're talking about how crowded these ships were and how oppressively inhuman that shit was. Shit, which one huh? was it? Y'all, y'all got, man, for real. Listen. I hope this is that one. That's why, you know what made me want to do this, Bill? What we were talking about the other night, Swordfish and OTK and Straight Smoke. And what we kept laughing about for like 30 minutes because. 30 minutes. <laughs> 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm surprised. Uh, what you call me make it in the night? But everybody, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, share this to your channels, to your platforms, to your Facebooks. Your but well, maybe not your Facebooks, because they did already shadow ban me on it. But your, your TikTok, whatever the fuck y'all got, you know what I'm saying? To your community tab on uh on YouTube. You know, I I really appreciate the support. You know, I'm not asking y'all for no donations. I don't want nothing from y'all. I just want y'all to come in and enjoy the build and enjoy the foe. Of course you is. Told you about that, man. <laughs> well, I don't know. We're going to be rocking for a second, though, because there's some other things I want to show, too. Let me stop sharing real quick. There's some other things I want to uh, share. Oh, just, just wait one to five. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do you. I'm just talking to them. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. You know, I had to tighten you up. You asked me to do something. Guess what I'm gonna do? I know. It's it's coming. Oh, I know. It, 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 yeah, it's it's gonna be there in a second. It's gonna be there in a second. I can do in the meantime, though, man. Because yeah, y'all like this. The shit is out of control at this point. And then when we watch these uh these bills with you know other uh you know YouTubers and stuff, I'm not I'm not mentioning their name because that's too. I'm not doing it. But when we watch the these videos about that? this, huh? Is that the first time you played that? The first time I played with the Don Lemon? Yeah. Uh oh. I played it before. Mm. Played and it you didn't get man. struck for it. You said what? And you ain't get struck for it. No, nah, because I got the uh the fair use all over the job. I even got the fair use on the uh description. No, you you know what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because I needed to know the extent I can go, and I was scared to do that extent. Yeah, Real I shit. cut it off, you know, because I know it was going. You know, I ain't, I ain't let it go too long. Girl, you just showed me something I can do. I can do. You yeah, heard me? I got it all over the place. So yeah. Fuck. Don't come fuck with this video. Oh no, it's not that. If you already yeah. did it once. And they didn't do nothing, and they let that slide. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking at. That means yeah. I can give you some other shit that I've been doing, and it's under the same shit, you know. Shoot, I can't like call it. Talk. I, I can't, can't call it. I just can't. YouTube be on some funny shit, you know. One minute it's cool, the next minute it, you know. Let me check this one and make With sure it, it ain't got right. no copyright. Your data security is more important. Some videos got a copyright claim, you know, copyright joint, some don't. No, I'm talking about the ones that I got. Uh, That's all I'm talking about. 
you played that Don Lemon clip of mine. And I, that's why I asked you if you did that prior. Mm -hmm. you know, if you did it prior and you had no problems, I know how far I can go. I was scared to do that on here. I did it on somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you hear that? Yes. Faintly. Now, I'm from DC. I had to play that for Swordfish. Talk about I sound like I'm from uh Philly. <laughs> oh shit. Not most of the go go I listen to y'all is old school. You a real one, girl. Old school. You know that. <laughs> you know that, right? Mm -hmm. Don't lose your light. Don't change your shine. Don't let nothing dimmer what you do. Stay mm -hmm. on course. Stay on course. And I said joint or jump. Yeah, well, I won't say no John. That's a that's a distinct difference. <laughs> hey, keep running around screaming that thug life. Y'all know nothing about it. Who is they covering? Y'all know. Damn, I can't believe I'm doing this shit. I can't believe I'm doing this. You know what I'm doing? Honestly, Sharice. All right, there we go. I ain't going to do too much for y'all. But I am going to throw my city in there every now and then. <laughs> Would you say, uh, uh Sharice Smoke? You want to know what I'm doing right now? What you doing? Oh, it's a mixture yeah. of being super realistic and being somewhat docile. Mm -hmm. Because that's what people are doing right now. And that's what they're doing. They're being super realistic about certain things and they're being super docile about a lot uh, of things. Mm-hmm. Because nope. it's the cognitive dissonance, I'm telling you. Or I'm is it retardality? <laughs> See, I've been trying to give people the benefit of the doubt because I understand, like when you when you're in school, when like you know, when we like seven, eight, nine years old, we are real impressionable. So, you know, everything that we learn, you know, you really taking it to heart, you really taking it, you know, for face, you know, real life. You taking it mm -hmm. for what it is. So when you mm -hmm. grow up. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't really mature and evolve. You can't see through the lies and you can't, you know, you can't decipher the truth. And I see that with a lot of the people, you know, who can't seem to understand how unrealistic that, that drawing is. And that's why I wanted to present some of that article to let people understand. Like, listen, even we have scholars out here who saying that this is not realistic. Like, they painted this. They drew this. This is not to say that this is like, they use this as the overarching factor to say, hey, this is what slavery looked like so that they can have a way to describe it or describe those uh, voyages and passages. So, yeah, it's sick, y'all. It's sick. So you're telling me that somebody wouldn't want to go back and rewrite how they in instituted? Certainly. Hold on. Instituted. That's included. And, hold on. Instituted employmentship. <laughs> why can't why, mm -hmm. why can't nobody be real no more? Straight like that. So you do know because that. Uh, hold on, I'm not. I'm not coming at sometimes you. Sometimes a lie, so, a lie is better than the truth. I'll put it to you like this. They can, how they can how did they you they become can. a slave? How did you become a slave before an employee? Make that make sense. Let's go to this video. I want to go back to this video too. You can keep talking no straight smoke. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. It don't go make ahead. no. That's the problem. It, 
these people are crazy to even think something like that is logical. Just like thinking something logical, like it's my screen. Okay, there you go. Make it make sense. Just like thinking it's logical to believe that this DNA shit is fact. Okay? Like, I'm going to oh, look. The limits of ancestry DNA tests explain limits, people. But we well, was at the did. bottom of the boat with the bullshit. Come on, man. Hold on. Come let's, on. Let's, Come on. Let's, let's be for real. Huh? Because when they first came out, they said this was for entertainment purposely only. Everybody forgot that. This is a good video. They did it. In this video, I'm going to go into some cute little details. Just in case y'all missed it, the last time I presented it, I got to go back to stuff because I know it's new people coming in. I know, you know, whatever's going on. So y'all need to understand. Y'all need to because there's no way that they could put some ridiculous amount of spit in your in a, in a tube. Y'all, let's rock. Excuse the ad. You'll get better. But really listen carefully to what this young man is saying. Or condition. You can't do So I recently took one of those at-home DNA ancestry tests. What I had to do was fill up a vial with a disgusting amount of spit and mail it off for analysis. We're gonna... <laughs> Sorry. I just spit it back up in my nose. I'm sorry, y'all. That's funny as shit. <laughs> I'm a mute later, up. I'm this is what I got. It's a neat little pie chart with these specific percentages that were color regions on a world map. Did you mean to turn the sound off? What up? My bad, y'all. What'd you say, straight smoke? No, I just went fade to black. It's like it didn't have a sound. Oh, my bad. Okay. I'm back. I'm going to move back up and just press play. My bad, y'all. It still has no sound. This is Wendy. Hold on, let me stop. These my bad, y'all. I forgot my black ass couldn't mute while y'all while the thing was on. I'm sorry about that. Let me uh, uh let's go back. Okay. So I recently took one of those at-home DNA ancestry tests. All I had to do was fill up a vial with a disgusting amount of spit and mail it off for analysis. We're going to be here for a very long time. I just spit it back up in my nose. A couple weeks later, this is what I got. It's a neat little pie chart with these specific percentages that were color matched to different regions on a world map. The report told me I was mostly Southwest Asian. No surprises there, considering both my parents are from Iran. That percentage, 86.7, I understood that to be the portion of my DNA that's West Asian. But it turns out that's not exactly what ancestry tests are telling us at all. This is an ad for one DNA ancestry test, 23andMe. An ethnically ambiguous woman travels the world and a circle animates around her, sort of like the pie chart in my test results. 
as if to say this woman's DNA is 29% East Asian. And here's an ad for a different ancestry test. 52% of my DNA comes from Scotland. <laughs> and somehow this information compels him to wear a kilt? All right, so what are Ancestry tests really telling us? Can you help me understand what my results are telling me? Because I'm getting mixed messages from ads and how other people talk about their results. This is Wendy Ra. I'm an associate professor of sociology at the University of British Columbia. Okay, first of all, these test results are not about your entire DNA. They're about a tiny, tiny fraction of your DNA. There it is. <laughs> tiny fraction of your DNA. Tiny. Where's the pain boo-boos at? There it is. You know what I'm this? There it is. <laughs> Hold on. Do you, do you want to know what that tiny fraction of your DNA is, really? Because she won't say the cry part out loud. You want me to go ahead and tell you? If you, if you like. 164th. <laughs> Sound familiar? Oh, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. 164th. Mm -hmm. This is. Yeah. Mm -mm. Oh, 182nd. You to pick. understand how genetic ancestry tests work, let's start with the DNA itself. There are about 3 billion base pairs in our genetic code. Those are the A's, C's, T's, and G's that form the instructions that make us, us. Of these 3 billion base pairs, 99.9% .9 are exactly the same in all humans. But for the remaining 0.1%, one person might have an adenine where another person has a guanine. These single letter differences are called single nucleotide polymorphism, or SNPs. Groups of SNPs can help explain why some people are taller than others, or why some people have green eyes while others have brown eyes. But most SNPs have no known effect at all. What many DNA tests are looking at are a relatively small number of SNPs, specific positions in this 0.1% uh... of that DNA, in order to give you your results. You want to comment on that? Uh, well, you have to look at something. You have to look at something. Wouldn't that be genealogy? <laughs> Just asking a, uh, asking a simple question. I could be wrong. Because, you know, some of us didn't do inbreeding neither. Yeah. But I digress. That's a great point. When a testing company receives your sample, they compare your pattern of SNPs to different reference populations in their database. These reference populations contain SNPs known to exist in their database. <laughs> okay. You have to take the test <laughs> to be in the database. Say it again. Mm -hmm. Say it again. You have to take the test to be in their database. Mm -hmm. That's what people don't understand. They going over there to Africa, swabbing a bunch of motherfuckers and putting spit in, uh, in that shit. That's what they doing? Oh. No, they're not. Different modern populations in the world. Then the testing company will give you a percentage that represents how strongly your person resembles that group. But Shit, hold up. I gotta hear the mouse get over here. Go ahead. You want me to go back to that player again? Oh, no. Yeah. I just want you to look at that pie chart real quick of the differences of the no, countries that they're using. Modern population. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yes. Do you see that? European, West African, and East Asian. Mm hmm. 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 Exactly. Why are you not testing everybody? Uh, I'm, all I can think about to myself is that there was nobody in Iceland. There was nobody in Canada. There was nobody in South America. There was nobody in America. Really? So everything had to stipulate from these three entities, correct? Is that what mm -hmm. you're telling me? That's what they tell you. 
That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Think about what I'm saying. Mm. Food for thought. Then the testing company will give you a percentage that represents how strongly your pattern of SNPs resembles that group. But this process has a bunch of important limitations, and this is where things get complicated. Lots of markers are found in multiple populations around the world. First, even trying to classify humans into groups in the first place is tricky. Human genetic diversity isn't organized neatly into groups like countries or continents. Take a look at the distribution of this SNP that affects how a person absorbs folic acid. It's commonly found in Mexico, but also in Chile or even China just as often. So let's say that a particular marker is found in the South Asian population 30% of the time. There's still a possibility that when you inherited this marker, you got it not from somebody who was South Asian, but from somebody who was in some completely different group that also happened to have that marker. Second, Did you hear companies that? Companies put together their reference population. And that's why this that's why this shit is so fraudulent. That's why this is fraudulent. Based on academic research and other people that have taken genetic ancestry tests. And most testing companies aren't clear about how many people are represented in their reference populations. So each company might have different reference databases, which helps explain why you might get different results from different companies. So what does this all mean for my results? This is a a probability with a margin of error. So it's not that you Uh, over- What'd she say? What'd she say? What the fuck did she just say? Hold up, y'all. For my results. This is uh, a probability with a margin of error. So it's not that you overall. With a margin of error. But y'all African know. And somehow there's no error in that. Child, look. All are 85% West Asian, but that the particular spots that they happen to look at, 85% of those locations are associated with Western Asia in their reference population. So what about these other results? Am I really 2% African? You've got a lot of, you know, sort of small trace percentages here. Percentages that small are really not meaningful. Again, because that could be affected by having one person in the database. And if that one person gets reclassified later on, because they oh! that percentage will disappear. Oh, the DNA ancestry tests are percentages that small are really not meaningful. Again, because that could be affected by having one person in the database. Affected by having what? A person in the database. One person. But supposedly we got all these Africans. That one person gets reclassified later on. Because they- Look at him. Talk about 2% African. They get, you know, a larger sample. That percentage will disappear. Ultimately. If you get a larger sample, that percentage will ultimately disappear. A larger Say that sample. Again. Say that again. If you get a larger mm-hmm. sample, the other sample will disappear. That means that they have to have something that overrides the sample that they have. That means that it has to come from a actual source in the region. Mm-hmm. This is insane. And they no, it's it. not. It's I'm not saying, insane. You know he ran. You understand what I'm saying? No, nah, I know what you're saying. I'm saying it's insane that people don't understand why we are against this. Why are they only giving you three reference points? There was nothing else in the world? Nothing else? Honestly? Are you really saying that? Think about it. I don't want to keep doing this. This hurts me. It hurts me. Yeah. But we we gotta let the people know because they keep, I'm not they saying we should decide about neck. I'm no, sorry. we not. I'm sorry, Sharice. I'm sorry. No, you are. Right. They think we talking out the side about neck. We not. 
Now here go the receipts. Now what you gonna say? Because here's the receipts. Yeah, because the receipts started coming out. A DNA ancestry tests are really just giving us a probability. The testing company's best guess. And the the, the, the testing company's, company's best, best guess. guess. Come Did we on, y'all. All time together, for real. <laughs> the DNA company's best, best guess. guess. Come on, y'all. We got it right, man. Thank I'm you so much. For them, uh, fucking Pan Africans, bitch. They guessing. What the dude they say? Guess. They back there making it up anyway. They gotta, they gotta break themselves into righteousness. For real. <laughs> Why don't nobody see that? They got to make themselves look like they're the victor or the righteous or the meek. However you want to pull it. However. Off the jump, off the muscle. That's what it's got to be. Come on. <laughs> this is crazy, man. Roll that man. beautiful bean footage. Man, about to cook their ass. They thought I was playing when I was coming into this paradigm. I'm not playing with y'all. They get you know, a larger sample, that percentage will disappear. Ultimately, DNA ancestry <clears throat> tests are really just giving us a probability, the testing company's best guess. And that mm. uncertainty isn't made very clear in the results. Very, mm. In my results, I found this confidence slider. It turns out my res Confidence slider, y'all. Mm -hmm. Pay close attention right here to this confidence slider. Results were presented at about 50% confidence by default. <laughs> when I 50% <laughs> confidence. Young. Young. Woo! <laughs> come on. Just make it. Come on. Like, stop playing. Like, stop. Come on. Think about what you're saying. Think about what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. Think about it. No, seriously. You're talking about duping some people. Man, the Just hold on. Dupes. Check this out. Just to get their genome. Just to get their trade, which is their pattern of their bloodline. Mm -hmm. And now they got it. And then they wonder why you have certain kind of diseases. Mm. You think Russia went into Ukraine for no reason? What about the 24 labs there? <laughs> come on, man. Let's let's come on. Let's not do this. Not you, Sharice. I don't mean it nah, like that. No. Nah, I know which yeah, this joint is a real short video, but it, it keep it they, they keep it sweet. Because y'all not about to keep playing no more. Like, that DNA, no. No. Don't ever come at me about it again. I'm mad they not in here carpet aborigines because they always talking shit. And always coming at me in the chat. Not tonight. Yeah, y'all niggas rolled out. Once that stuff started coming out about them drawing the painting and you know, the comparisons and, and, and height and width and length. Yeah, receipts. I'm just saying, go back to the lady that said, I don't know. It might have been a man. <laughs> this is the best guess of the company. Wild ass. I don't know. <laughs> the best guess of the company in the database and if that one person gets reclassified later on because they get and what we've been saying the whole time about reclassification mm. and then they want to keep acting like re reclassification wasn't a thing like oh no 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 i don't want to be good to get into they had asses but we've been sitting over here saying time and time again that the black people were reclassified and misnomer throughout history that's the bottom line that's the reason why we out here on this stuff, okay? Like, make no mistake. The, the proof is in the pudding. Always Look at the stock. There. Look at the stock. We still here, baby. 
How you doing, Richard Neal, babe? Peace to you. Peace to the uncle. Peace to the elder. Sample, that percentage will disappear. Ultimately, DNA ancestry tests are really just giving us a probability, the testing company's best guess. And that uncertainty <laughs> isn't made very clear in the results. <laughs> no, we got to keep playing that back. Because <laughs> y'all keep talking about what your DNA say. What your DNA say. The company's best guess. What <laughs> 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 that shit say? <laughs> Company's best motherfucking girl. Stop playing with us. I guess you from uh, East Africa, nigga. I don't know. You might be. You might be. Maybe you from, I don't know. Hey, hey. Uh, depending on who took this test, we'll be able to let you know. Mm hmm. Yeah, girl. girl. Right, like I don't know what. And, and, and how can, what do reclassification got to do with your genes? And science. That's a social really thing. Am I know? correct, straight smoke? You really want to know? Am I correct though on that on that point? That the race is a social situation and science is biological, something totally different when we're talking about swabbing our mouth pulling our hair from our follicle uh all of these things you know wherever you you access you know extract dna from right okay. that's two different things right okay so where the fuck are they trying to marry them now because of one thing that i'm i'm starting to see more than ever who did they really need as far as organs and blood still do need do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now go back to when the first heart transplant happened. Go back to when the first uh, blood transfusion happened. It's a reason for everything. Mm -hmm. These people just genetically does not have it. No. Never was on. And they think they gonna get it from yeah, Mexicans, dog. Do I need to go back to the boat, bitch? Mm. Anyway, can't make this shit up at all. Very in my results, I found this confidence slider. It turns out my result presented at about fifty percent confidence by default. When I increased that to ninety percent, my results got much more vague. All of a sudden, I was broadly West Asian, and a lot of my genetic markers were unassigned. <laughs> <laughs> So DNA ancestry tests don't Do know where our ancestors live. Did y'all see that? So if they really looked into their DNA test, they probably see some something similar to what this young man saw. But no, they're not looking into that. They're just showing you that little front screen. But they're not showing you the inside. Fucking lying ass motherfuckers. Not his results got more vague. Child, look. It's a dagger right here. Buried in my results, I found this confidence slider. It turns out my results were presented at about 50% confidence by default. When I increased that to 90%, my results got much more vague. All of a sudden, I was broadly West Asian, and a lot of my genetic markers were unassigned. So DNA ancestry tests don't actually tell us where our ancestors lived. They're really just giving us probabilities of where we're likely to have relatives today. But so what if people misinterpret their results? Well, that has consequences. They can make us believe that our ethnicities have these bright line distinctions between them, like in a pie chart. When people are presented uh, with test results and, and these percentage breakdowns, and they are led to think that these tests can tell you your race, or they can tell you who you are. That leads to a way of thinking, it makes us feel that there are very stark and clear biological differences between races. Pause it. Yeah. Dang. We, you we, can go back and oh, replay you know. what she said. 
That's all you gotta do. Go back and play, replay. And y'all motherfuckers is delusional at this point. Because at this point, it's giving delusion straight smoke. We, we, seriously. I can't believe they was out there cutting the fool last night. About some DNA. And about a last name. None of that matters. Would you believe they pledged $3.6 billion towards it? Towards <laughs> what? To find I'm out where they're from. Test. To Child. find out where they're from. You you walk, man. They, that's so sad. So DNA ancestry tests don't actually tell us where our ancestors lived. They're really mm. just giving us probabilities of where we're likely to have relatives today. Likely to have relatives today. Huh. But so what if people misinterpret their results? And a lot of y'all is misinterpreting y'all results. All per this guy. Well, that has consequences. They can make us believe. <laughs> y'all need to stop. Well, I, I don't know why uh Shaw son ran. Why you run? I don't know why you ran. That our ethnicities have these bright line distinctions between them, like in a pie chart. When people are presented. Uh, with test results and percentage breakdowns, and they are led to think that these tests can Pause be it. yours. Or they can you hear that key word? Tell you your race. No. You think that this test and they're hold on, race. and they're led to think a certain way. Yep. They're led to think <laughs> a certain. This is psychology. One hundred and one. That's all it is. I'm what else you need you, to see? Man, I'm telling you. That's why I told him this is a mental condition. This is a, You know what? I feel, like, I feel like we just need to just one more time because I don't know what the now I'm not saying white it. Hair. The white, she's saying it. Not to call it the white lady. Y'all know what I mean. Yeah, she's saying it. She's saying it. Leave for y'all to think a different way. Y'all ain't thinking y'all somebody y'all not. That's why it's embarrassing. And y'all think that's cute? Claiming a land that's not your own? And when they tell you it's not your home, do you upset? No. They tell you the truth. You are home. Distinctions between them, like in a pie chart. When people are presented, uh, with test results and, and these percentage breakdowns, and they are led to think that these tests can tell you your race, or they can tell you who you are. That leads to a way of thinking, it makes us feel that there are very stark and clear biological differences between races. One study oh, really? Three tests reinvigorate age old beliefs in essential racial differences. Invigorate age old beliefs, age old beliefs, age old beliefs. And essential racial differences. What huh. DNA tests do? Huh. Y'all yeah. want some bullshit. I... That are socially constructed racial categories like, like white or black are essentially different from each other. Some groups have even turned to genetic ancestry tests to try and prove their racial purity. <laughs> DNA ancestry tests can be useful. Search YouTube and you'll find hundreds of stories of people using them to find lost relatives and to fill in their family history. And I think that's all they need to be useful. Bullshit. Find your, your, your relatives that directly are connected to you. No. Nope. That's it. You're not going to find the ancestors that are connected directly to you, then you don't need to utilize it. Well, if that's the case, guess what you have? You have a First class lawsuit. You do know that, right? Mm. Why? Because they shared your G uh, DNA material. But if they're signing consent, if people they, are signing an agreement to this, they, thing, they did not. Hold on, before. listen to me. The only way that they're going to get that is through any kind of um, um, baby, mother, father, baby type deal. Okay. Okay. Seriously. Well, you go in and you're about to have a baby and the mother and the father's there. Baby is about to be present. Yeah, that's that's the only way you're getting all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
they so, have to take the test. That's what so, people keep missing. So either you're willfully doing that or they're not willfully doing that. Mm. I really need you to understand what I'm saying. Because you do know what the hospital does with your placenta, right? Yeah. Okay. So. The motherfuckers made me mad too because I wanted mine. Yeah, we kept ours. Let me see it. We kept ours. No IVs, none of that. None of that. Nope. Don't need that. Nope. It, 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 they they everywhere. These people, man. I don't want to say too much, but just know, man. Y'all y'all need to watch yourself, and y'all need to know your rights. Yeah. And you need to know, you know, how to assert yourself to make sure that you get the proper health care. Always, y'all. That's to all my people. Hmm? Thank you, son. <clears throat> I kid you not. I kid you not. It's like if you go and take an IV. One third of that IV is sent off for their own studies. It's patently theirs. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I, I don't know how else to put this no more. It's it's starting, it's becoming redundant to me. It's been redundant. Because you're selling your genetic material. And you're yeah. not getting paid for it. For real. Straight like that. I don't even understand it, to be honest. I can tell you something that's going to hurt the land. Because I don't think nobody said it. I don't think nobody said it. But you know what? I'm not going to do it here. I'm not going to do it here. Because I already know what I know. This is crazy. And there's people out here funding it. Willfully ignorant. Yeah. Willfully ignorant. You're helping the cycle of destruction. Seriously. I'm serious. Yeah, it is, again, like you said, it's continuing to invigorate race, old, age, old race issues. And it, and, it, and it, I don't see no lies. I don't, I don't see any lies in the statement. It's not race, though. No, I'm just saying it's Three. rooted in that. No, nope, it's rooted no, it's in not. the lies, like the article. Nope, it's said. not. What do you Sorry. mean? No, it's not. Nope, it's not. Sorry, no, it's not. This is called class warfare. Well, yeah. either your either racist, either, your, either your family is of the business or they're not. Seriously, it's class warfare. Seriously, look at the class structure. They've been showing you this. Yeah, roll it, roll it. You think I'm kidding? This is class warfare. No, I don't bro. think you're kidding. I don't misunderstand that. I'm just saying, you know, I, I look at the, I look at class and races in the same kind of situation. Like I feel like when we're talking about class, like your race is is next to it, and people well, look at themselves a certain way. Like here's the problem: even black people, some black people may not classify as black. On okay, paper. here's here's like the problem. Something. Here's the problem. I'm talking about business and I'm talking about employment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even in that's that the sense. class warfare. Mm -hmm. Those that know how to do and those that don't, but still need to survive. But some people call that, I don't know, indentured servitude or slavery. Seriously. It's care. class warfare. Yeah. It's class warfare. It's just that's just what it is. Honestly, do you do you really think that these pale faces did not set up anything to make uh, um, Americans go against each other? 
Do you really believe that? Because they've been showing you right now that they fund both sides of any war. So what's to be any different now? Hmm. Hey, I don't yeah. feel like anything is different. Because it's not. They're funding both sides of the war. That's just it. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go right. ahead and and um, tomorrow when I get back to the house after I get done smoking, I'm gonna let you see the 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 thing that I put together, the track that I put together that shows the funding of arms since 1496. Let me know. I'm serious. I'm talking about it shows you in real time how much they were dispensing all over the world. And all I got to do is just place in a different country at that time frame. And it shows it all. It's just a it's just the funding of war. It's all everybody don't see the funding of war. How do how do we have all these, I don't know, senators and house republic uh uh house house members on the board for war? When I say war, I'm talking about stocks, stocks for Raytheon, Lockheed Martin. How do we have that? Why do they know that? Why does the senators know to place their bids on when to go to war? Hmm. Just asking a question. Man, we I, I need a little second straight smoke because yeah, this shit really. Really be taking me out, <laughs> having me feeling some type of way. And really do. I apologize. But that ain't you. It's just nothing but lies and propaganda. That's the problem. And they doing so much to destroy, it's entertainment. To destroy this beautiful America, man. It's and entertainment. It's entertainment. Yeah. And people don't know how to. Decipher entertainment from reality. They sure don't. Father Ray, Ray Younger. Come on, man. Fuck a pan African, fuck a pan African, fuck a pan African, fuck a pan African. Hey, the niggas trash like some ooh. Gotta get back to them slay hey, hey, hey. Gotta get back to them slay hey, hey, hey. Fuck a slave narrative, they phony. Nah, this nigga named Toby and he owe me. When the block drop, when the stock drop, on top, them niggas going. So to the bit of cotton pickers and my niggas. I'ma come down, feed them chillers and them gizzards. Nigga, I'm the best I whip ya, I'll kill you. In the big eyes, go down with the system. Send it back to you, then the sin for your mother. Y'all niggas work out for working like no other. Make you pick cotton to the sun, come and touch you. Take your damn hands and feet, your foot all busted. With me and my eyes, I'm a backhanded fucker. Nah. Shout out to Grandma Foo Foo. Why your man came to the one that sold you? My crew swam to the show and got you. The shit Jesus made a nigga came through. Hey, fuck a pan African, fuck a pan African, fuck a pan African, fuck a pan African. Hey, the niggas trash like the food. Gotta get back to the play, hey, folks. All right, y'all. That's the wrong one. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I I got I I do so many, so many stuffs, you know. But this so, one. No, nope, just. No, just give me a minute. Give me a minute. 
I got you. I, I got you laced up. I got you laced up. All right. Peace I mean, y'all. it's all in how you want to do it. You know, it's all in how you want to do it. You know what? We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk. Yeah, girly girl, I had my daughter eight years ago. So like, dang, is that still valid? Like, I can still look for that joint. Like. Cause they, yeah, they was on some bullshit. Like, I don't know. It was feeling real weird. It wasn't giving what it was supposed to give. But let me go ahead and finish this out real quick. This damn last piece of this video. But just so y'all know, man, that, that DNA shit, if you ain't finding your parents in them, it's not giving. I just found my biological dad's family. And to people who don't know a lot about their ancestry, the tests offer the best available estimate. So I really don't know that much about like my genetic history. But it's important to remember that despite their marketing, these tests are just a company's best guess at matching your genetic markers to different parts of the world. What they're not going to tell you is whether you should wear a kilt or not. DNA ancestry tests might not be as informative as you want them to be, but more and more people are still taking them. And this giant database of genetic information is becoming super valuable to an unexpected group, law enforcement. We teamed up with Verge Science to look into how your privacy is at risk because of these DNA ancestry tests, even if you've never taken one. Huh. And ain't got privacy at risk. How about that? But y'all want to keep saying we was on this joint. And because the DNA say you African, oh, well, it must be true. Oh, how you doing, Swarfish? Peace, peace, peace. What's going on, Sharice? Peace to you. Stay Thank smoke. you for the panel. Yeah, 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 for sure. I was, uh, out at a, uh, I was out at a family cookout. They had me out there on the fish, frying the fish. Oh, nice. I, I think I might be the best in the city, man. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know what? Love uh, some fish, okay? Yeah, I was catching the, um, while while I was on the wander, when the e when the Ebos got off and wanted oh, to walk man. back in the water, <laughs> yeah. I just I just pulled out my fishing rod and um, caught me a few fish. And then, oh, but this joint right here? Yeah, oh, you yeah. see how you do? You see how you do? <laughs> you see how you do? I can't stand you, Negroes. I can't stand you, Negroes. I figured I might as well just go ahead and drop me a line in the water. You know, Drop you a line in the water. You ain't, you ain't throw no net out? You ain't throw no net out, huh? Yeah, I, you just I, I a line have, in the water. I ain't huh? have enough for a net. I just have God enough damn. for a, a stick in the water. I didn't land there like this. God damn. And like that. You know, this is insane, y'all. Look at this. Boy, you ain't right. Man, I looked at them like, why y'all walking in the water, man? They got some good fish out here in Georgia, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, come on, man. Three, just scroll up a little bit. Just scroll up. Oh, my God. I'm not No, no, because I got to address this. Just scroll up just a little bit. All right, right there. Right there. Oh, 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 too far, too far. Just go too back far. down a little bit. Yeah. I need both boats in the same motherfucking screen. These two? You know what I'm the talking about. Deck. Oh, oh, there we go. The Thank you deck. right there. Okay. Let's be rational. How? Just how? Without a how? Drink. It's supposed to be wood. No, fuck oh. all the wood shit. I love you too, son. Give me a second. I love you too, son. Give me a second. How? So do they have a front to back thing for people going to the bathroom? That's what you that? in the thing. They supposedly did. I don't know. That's in your room. Where? Where? A room? A storeroom? I don't know what the fuck this is. Hold on, hold on, is. hold on. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If you got those rooms, they're supposed to be designated for food. And then let's just say the bathroom, right? Let's just take it at face value. Come on, work with it. Do you nah, they were just under there dead looking all like this, laying down like this. No. 
That's what the fuck they say. But this they, is impossible to survive. They did. They did do me a solid. They let me put my fishing rod in the storage. <laughs> Boy, you ain't shit. You ain't shit. So I gotta ask this other. I gotta ask this other simple question. Other simple question. There has, to my knowledge, or to anybody's knowledge, has there been any successful voyage from Africa? To America across the Atlantic. They ain't they ain't they ain't prove shit directly across, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, they ain't prove none of that. They up there, what they doing? What these niggas doing? These two. Did you hear what I said, right? Yeah, I hear you. I'm about to get this damn picture because. Because that wouldn't be transatlantic. Look at this. It would not be transatlantic if it didn't go from continent to continent. You can't go from continent to island to continent. That's not transatlantic. I just figured out your bullshit real fast. Real fast. That's how simple common knowledge works. Continent to continent. Is trans continent to island is not by definition. Oh, just found a flaw in the game. This is the boat for the the transatlantic jump during the middle passage. There has never been no ship to sail across the Atlantic. What you say? But this is what they say. They say this is the boat. I mean, oh, I guess that was was Noah on that motherfucker too. <laughs> they had all the storage, the tonnage, they had the water on it. Yeah, Noah place. had to be on that boat. He That's the heart. They had her heart. He needed to be successful in this motherfucker. Look at this. Now wait, is that That's the third. bottom deck? Hey. Oh, that's the third plan of lower deck with stowage of 292 slaves. So 130 of these being stowed under the shelves as shown as shown in figure eight and six. Whatever that should say. I can't see figure B and figure whatever. Y'all get the point. So they had because I just got to the whole article about yeah, this is not reality here. They had three rows like a denali. <laughs> the whole hold on. The whole bottom of the ship was nothing but Negroes. And then they had an upper deck of the ship that was outlined in Negroes. And then they had where all the people that was holding them Negroes hostage on the top. Think about that. Yeah. So the members they, they, over here. The front seat. These are supposed to be the boys, the kids, the little boys. And right here is supposed to be all the women. According to that. So that's Make all that that makes sense. They lie like really? hell. And then not only that, like, like they said in the thing, like, you know, you know, the bodies to be different don't sizes. Even sound fucking right. You look mean to tell me? Age. Look at that. You mean to tell me we just going to be like, hey, hey, hey. Let's just go and uh just be slaves. Where are the books from Africa saying don't be in this area because they stealing people? I know you heard me say that, Sword. But that's I know you heard me say that. Out with Africans enslaved their own people. That's not an excuse for that. I ain't hear. They ain't hear you. enslaved Africans. They didn't enslave us all the way over here. I, 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 mean, I ain't over there to get us in this. I ain't hear you say that straight smoke, but I did know when you came downstairs and got on the boat, you asked me if you want the top bunk or the bottom. <laughs> You see what I'm talking about? You see what I'm talking about? I can't even talk to you no more. I can't even talk to you no. Do I want the top bunk? And then they said bunk. they was cooking on this. Cooking what? Cooking Nigga, what? I want the bottom bunk. You already know. <laughs> Fuck. See, that lying. And then I was like, Master, can you uncuff me? Because he won't. <laughs> <laughs> he wants the bottom bunk. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I can't go. <laughs> That's all I'm women. serious, and 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 it's like, how do you look Ooh, at right. this image? How do you look at this image for real and take it at face value 
and do not understand that this is fictional. Man, the sharks will be tearing this boat up. Oh, my well, that's it. <laughs> I'm going to say this again. Okay. Oh, okay. I guess I got to be the bearer of bad news. What's the one thing that's in the ocean? Come on. All right. Let fuck it. Oh, fuck it, Sharice. Hold on. No, Sharice. I'm about to I'm about to get real serious with you. You never heard me say this. Nobody ever heard me say this. What's in the ocean? Watch this. Water. A lot of water. Huh? A lot of water. No. In that motherfucking ocean. No. Nope. All types of shit in that motherfucking ocean. Yeah, worms. Nope. No, nope. I, I, I believe it's mermaids down at the bottom of that bitch. All Hold kinds on. of shit. All Guess kinds of unusual shit too. Guess what's in the ocean? What? A whole bunch of eggs and sperm. That's why it's oh. salty. Well, yeah. <laughs> you said a whole bunch of what? I don't go too far with my imagination, okay? Look at the boat. It's the one you showed egg, me yesterday, egg. Swore. Swore. What's in the ocean is called a whole bunch of eggs and Fucking sperm, and they was watching oh, them with yeah. that water. They claim how, how much? How how much? How much does a whale give off, bro? Do you know? Nah, I don't know. Seventy-two thousand tons. I believe. Did you hear me? Damn. Did you hear what I said? I think so. <laughs> That's what he, hey, bro. That's what he putting out. Damn. You heard what I said, right? That boy shooting up the club. They shooting up the club. <laughs> For real. How? Hold on. How much? Hold on. How much does the orca give out? Mm -hmm. Fifty-two thousand tons. Tons. How much does a great white shark give out? 15,000 tons. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah. You know what you're swimming Boy, around in? That's some bullshit. <laughs> Bruh, so you think that a nigga like me is going to the beach with these feminines that want to throw a pod in their ass and think that I'm safe in the water? And you was on that boat. You was on this one. Are this you one. serious? <laughs> what do sharks and orcas <laughs> love? The smell of what? Blood. Blood. Are you fucking serious? Man, a shark, you know, Stop it and cut it out. Stop it and cut it out. Bruh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. I just, Sharif, I just I'm gonna got... say this, and I mean all I mean all uh, due respect. Just because you throw a tampon in ain't stopping the blood. Why you think you want to go swimming in the ocean? In the if, ocean. If you got on Jesus boat, you know. Oh my god, I can't <laughs> <sense> <laughs> say you god, god. And then they said it was like five feet six inches wide in the deck, but they said something about it's supposed to be. I don't know, like they I don't know, they claimed that other images depicted it as like six feet, but I'm like, that's a, that, none of that shit makes sense. None of those God damn. do I gotta really say that, girly girl. Why do I know the weight of sea and mammals ejaculate? It's because of one thing. <laughs> Check this out. Why are you putting yourself at the bottom of the food chain. Did you think about that? When you get in the ocean, what do you be physically become? The bottom huh? of the food chain. Bottom of the food chain. Do you yeah. think I want to swim around in that shit? Nope. 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 Think about it. Stop, 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 stop being overly. That's the problem with everybody. Stop being overly. Just know that what's in that water is why they don't want to go into the water. That's why they want to go into outer space. And they see they can't do that neither. That should tell you something. Straight up. 
all the shit that Sharice is showing you right now is fictional. There is no way they can do this. No way. No way. And not get fucked well, up. Well, if they was good at Tetris. Did you say then... Tetris? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Swore Fish, I can't talk to you no more. I, I, I'm, I, I'm can't talk to you no more. <laughs> Texas. Like I was just playing Tetris yesterday with my oldest girl. You make me sick. You said Tetris. And actually, it wasn't even Tetris, it was Dr. Mario. Peace and love, y'all. It's been two hours and 57 minutes. Thank you all so so very much. Sword, you ain't shit. <laughs> 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 you, you know, elaborate on this conversation. I can't take these, these serious. Okay, I can't take it no more either, man. This is this is comical now. But when, that, when that nigga said there was a hole at the bottom of the boat, I did not lost it. I was like, oh hell no. <laughs> they already got a plunge at the bottom of the boat. Think about oh, they they got a socket at the bottom of the boat. <laughs> that shit reminded me of like a, a Tom and Jerry cartoon. So that, that was Popeye. That was Popeye. Oh yeah, Popeye. Yeah, yeah. That was Popeye. Oh yeah. come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. You know what? I'm showing my age. I'm showing my age. This shit's crazy. <laughs> Look, y'all. It's crazy. This is just another little. This is another little something. I'm. I would. I wasn't planning on coming out with right now, but I just want to read the abstract because it's just what goes. How fucked up this narrative is. Borders and betrayal in Zora Neale Hurston's Bear Coon, rethinking truths and facts in the American slave narrative. 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 Yeah, I'm just going to read the abstract for y'all. I'm not going to do too much tonight. Due to skepticism about authenticity, facts became a central trope in the American slave narrative genre. Authors bolstered their credibility by emphasizing factual details about the barbarity of enslavement on Southern plantations. Based on interviews conducted with Cujo Lewis, believed to be the last known surviving African slave in America, Zora Neale, Zora Neale Hurston's post—I never get this word right. Postmostly, oh child, y'all get what I'm saying? Published Bear Coon expands. That means after her death, you know. So this is after she died, and it was published. Uh, Barracoon expands the slave narrative's borders by unpacking the ramifications of trans action, transnational betrayal. Lewis's harrowing memory of the African corporates who captured and sold mm -hmm. him to white slave traders complicates the slave narrative's adherence to facts. Although the transatlantic slave trade created and operated by Europeans and Americans was a greater evil than the slave trading practices carried out by Africans, Lewis' betrayal by his own African neighbors reveals an existential trauma often ignored by the facts of slave narratives. Vera Kuhn is her sense as her most subvert subversive, choosing to explore the unresolved complications of a truthful lived experience instead of the clarifying comfort of contained facts. So y'all got to understand, slave narrative, translated slave trade, Truth, fact, and trauma. Those okay. are the key words. Okay. Did you did you see what happened though? Did you did you see the overlay for the underplay? Mm hmm Seriously. I ain't trying to come at you like that. Did you see the overlay for the underplay? What you mean come at me like what? Because guess what? They had to go his at his woman. To make her think that she needed to keep up with the Joneses. Mm -mm. No, that I was didn't. it. Yeah. That's all they had to do is make any woman believe, believe you had to keep a certain narrative, if you will. 
you had to keep a certain title, if you will. You 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 wasn't being heard unless you you were standing what what we were standing for. But if you were standing for your family, you was a sucker. Mm -hmm. The whole thing, the whole game was to get you away from the ideology of you and yeah. your family and your land. That's it. And I just want to let me share again because really this article stood out a lot because it had a lot of the good gems in it that it was dropping. Okay. Especially about when she first met this man. Yep. What happened, you know what I'm saying? Her being a mentee under France, Boaz. Of Christ. All of that. Of right? Christ. Yeah. Yeah, this shit gets deep. What we talk about, who was involved? We're creating these false narratives. And Damn, she just kind of got caught up in the whim of it. Sis, I got to show you how to make motherfucker read for you. I know. I got to show you how well, to make motherfucker so read you. for you. Oh, Shasa, leave, leave us alone, Shasa. Seriously. Ain't that glad? Yeah, fuck that nigga. <laughs> so, if y'all want me to go into it, I can go into it, but I just want y'all to understand, like, this slave narrative, they've been making it up since forever. Forever. They've been making it up, okay? Had you to they had to get you to believe it. So it'll separate you from the land. Yeah, in any way possible. Because and that's don't want to be stuck to them slave boats. Because it's jurisdiction of them saying that you never we brought you here with us. You goofy. And you wasn't brought there. You was already here. Well, I mean, come on, man. This is getting redundant. Some on the European. You know, seriously, this whole that's why I tell I told people when I saw Franz Boaz, I started going off. But of course, Top Cats, he was already hip. I love Top Cats, he was already hip. And I'm like, that's what it's all about. Because when it's all said and done, these folks is lying. Okay? She plagiarized. Okay? Because this is what they like to talk about, too. They go tell the argue, arguably the United States, the last United States slave ship to traffic in slaves from Africa carried out its expedition about 50 years after the U.S. had already outlawed the transatlantic slave trade. Despite the official ban in 1808, American slavers continued to traffic in Africans, albeit at decreased volume due to patrols, until the Cotilda's final voyage in 1860. So how is that possible? was a teenager when he was sold to an American slaver and brought to the Plateau Magazine Point in Alabama in 1860, where he was held as a slave for approximately five years until Union soldiers told him he was free. Unlike most African slaves at the time who were already settled in for, I mean, who were already settled in the U.S. for generations, Lewis still had vivid memories of his African home. Thus, according to his testimony, he struggled for the remainder of his life to find a sense of belonging or community in the U.S. How? See, here's where she comes into play. How? See, none of that adds up right there, what you just said. None of that that's adds just up. Them re just that's said. just them reiterating what the story is of Cotilda. That's all they're doing. They're telling you what the U.S., what they're saying uh, the Cotilda is about. That's what they're telling. I get you. it. Yeah, I yeah. truly get and it. I just want to be clear. You know, but I don't know whether or not this person agrees with that or not. You know what I mean? But the only reason I'm saying what I'm saying is because you have they have no proof of nothing that they're talking about. Nothing. None. Yeah. Show me a boat. <laughs> they can never. Her step first. Show me anything. Interview Lewis. 
Louis Lee Olula Kosala in July 1927. Dr. Franz Boas, often dubbed as the father of American anthropology, enlisted Hersey, Hurston, his Boaz. mentor, to get a you firsthand report of the raid that had brought him to America in bondage. The Journal of Negro History published Hurston's interview as Cujo's own story of the last American slaver. But years later, long after Hurston's death, the article was outed as a plagiarized document by a Hurston biographer, Robert yep. Hemingway. Most, article, most of the article was secondhand information lifted from historical sketches of the South, a historical text by a Alabama, by Alabamian farmer and writer, Emma Langdon Roche, which examines the history of American slavery, including the story of Cotilda and the fate of the African slaves it ferried. So we need to understand, even that's a, that's a plagiarized story, y'all. Can, can you go back over that? Yeah. Real quick, was the guy from Alabama, you said? Yeah. And he was yeah. telling a tale of something. Hold on. Not telling a tale, but he was depicting something where? You want me to read from the top? Hurston first met and interviewed Louis Ni Ulale Kusala in July 1927. Dr. Franz Boas, often dubbed the father of American anthropology, enlisted Hurston, his mentee, to get a firsthand report of the raid that had brought him to America in bondage. The Journal of Negro History published Hurston's interview as Cujo's own story of the last American slaver. But years later, long after Hurston's death, the article was outed as a plagiarized document by a Hurston biographer, Robert Hemingway. So, of, uh -huh. so you're you're telling me through through this right here, you're telling me if I'm if I'm correct, I I can be wrong. I've been been wrong before, but you're telling me that he tried to take the word of somebody that was a a former slave and found out that we found out that what he was writing about a former slave was incorrect. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're telling me? Mm -hmm. and even when he was reading, because he played, he got it from her. So, they so it's no her. difference than, than the uh, article that uh, another motherfucker brought up that was an unnamed source. Mm -hmm. No different. Okay, I'm just making you know where I'm going with this. No different. Because if it's not if it's plagiarized, it's not the truth. It's not your work. So whose work is it? If it's anonymous and nobody know who wrote it, who's to say it's true? Scholars have speculated on the reasons why Hurston, usually the consummate professional, resorted to plagiarism. She was, for example, disgruntled, disgruntled with the methodological processes of her employers, processes that had her chasing court records instead of doing immersive field work. She was also overworked and underpaid for the assignment, and perhaps she submitted an inauthentic document as a form of revenge. Other scholars like Linda, Blah, like Linda Marion Hill have pointed to her since inexperience at the time. In July 1927, she was not yet a tested social scientist and an accomplished novelist. She was perhaps oh. overwhelmed by the daunting task of depicting Lewis's story in a manner that transcended the stale methodological processes she detested. And according to literary scholar Linda Hill, Hurston became Hurston possibly became too uncertain how to manage her subjective response. So it sounded like that no other scholars wanted to actually hear her out. She was blackballed. Mm -hmm. She was blackballed. No one was taking her serious. Nobody was taking her serious. Mm -hmm. Right. Look, look, you know, I, 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 I can mm -hmm. see when in the I can see As in the word. <laughs> right, because you got to factor in the time 
there's no woman in this time. What'd you say? 1927, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what happened in 1927? You wasn't getting a word in on shit. Period. Sorry. Just wasn't. You wasn't. The only person that got a word in on something was Margaret Sanger. Yes, peace to the family. Yeah, I think I'm gonna run that. I'm gonna think I'm gonna run that tomorrow. So I think I'm gonna run that tomorrow. I think I'm gonna upload that tomorrow. Yeah, this is intense. No, you seen what I did on Margaret Sanger? You gonna? You're not gonna believe it. I might do it just live on my own because a lot of people do not know about Margaret Sanger. They don't. Yeah, the Planned Parenthood lady. Yeah, you know I gotta go back to this. <laughs> They said we was on this job. Where are you? America's not for sale. She's sitting over there lying. They, she and her no feelings. Way. Look at that. Just look at that with your own eyes. Look at that for your own eyes. How is it possible? How is it possible? Please, anybody explain it to me because you're not going to tell me you're fitting that number of people on a boat with uh food and water and and you're you're do you know how long it takes to cross the Atlantic Ocean? <laughs> I mean seriously boats. Come on, no, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that. Do you know how long it takes to cross the Atlantic? 90 days. God damn it. This is becoming stupid now. 90 days. And it was to say maybe longer. They put it on, you know, ocean current, you know. Okay, you want to know the truth about it for real? Truth about it for real? Peace, love. I'm talking about wind sail shits. When sell shit. Do you know how long it will cross how long it will take you? I told you 90 days. 120 days. Well, okay. Well, maybe 90 days at best. Minimum. I'm telling you. 120 days. Do you know why it's 120 it days? Do you know why it's 120 days? It's called acclimate, uh, inclement weather. Yeah. Time zone changes, all of that. I'm glad you brought that up. I just don't see how a motherfucker yeah. can believe this shit. I don't see it. I don't see it. Where's the food? Where's the food? Hold on. Where's the food? That's all... Where's the food in the bathroom? That's all I can start with. <laughs> That's why I read that article because they made all these salacious claims about where that food might have been. But on this motherfucking uh, which kind? I don't see that. Well, I just see slave room. I see room. I don't know. Maybe my black ass blind. But see, then they showing it even further. The other part of the deck. This is what they was. What this little ass ladder was doing? Like. <laughs> Bugbears, small fish. <laughs> it's not possible. But fucking, I don't care what nobody's talking about. It's not possible. What's going it's on, Sharice? Nah, I was trying. I was showing you the bunk bed. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm still waiting on the you know, open the Supposed to be sharing. Yeah, he uh, he can have the top bunk. You're a, goddamn, you're a goddamn lie. <laughs> I'm just waiting on Master to come unlock these damn bracelets. Right. <laughs> so that way uh, I can spot and bunk on it. What's happening? What's happening? Yes, peace to you. Peace, sisters. Mm -hmm. Peace. How y'all doing this evening? Good. Bro. What's going on, Curious? Man, you know, I'm a sailor by heart. I'm sailor. I'm a sailor. And I'm going to tell y'all this. I put it in the chat, but that's propaganda. That that this this that is propaganda. Yeah, this drawing was created by uh in England seventeen something, 
Yeah, we already touched it. We already yeah, touched yeah. it. Yep. Hold yeah, it was created to, to to show the cruelty of of the slave trade. So they didn't yep, pack nobody in that passage. shit. Yeah, they want yeah, they, we they wanted people. No yeah, and if yeah. if anybody think that they could pack people aboard that shit, there's no way in the hell. <laughs> Curious, curious. Yeah, let's 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 be totally honest. How many any vessels have went straight across the Atlantic? I mean, when I sailed from Jacksonville, Florida, we always went uh, south. This is this is steam. We we went down south first, and then we come back up. But we went down to pick up aircraft. And then but we you come, never sailed across through. No, no, we never. Man, we did shit. It took us took us forever to get across to Africa, man. I mean, it took I, it, on a steam driven vessel, but we was doing flight ops and all that other shit. It took 45, 45 days. That's a steam driven vessel, and we and we refueled every three. Uh, so I shouldn't say that. We refueled quite often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we refuel we refuel quite often. Uh we take we take we take we took on a million gallons of fuel every every so many days, let me say it like that, to to steam across. So and I think we ended up Mogadishu. One of the one of the times we went to Africa is Mogadishu. We was off the coast for a long time doing Operations. We sat right it. there for a while. Yeah, we sat there for a while, but we didn't never go straight across. We, man, it's that's been two thousand, two thousand one. You, you can't do it with a with a sailboat, but a stream a steam driven vessel. When I say steam, I'm can, talking about boilers. You can you can cut across you can, anyway. You can, you, can, you can do it with a sub. You can yeah. do it with a sub, but you can't yeah. do it with the actual on top. No, no, not not with a not with a sailboat, because you you have what they call those ocean jet gyres, and they have to carry you across. But in, anything else, like I say, a steam driven vessel, steam. When I'm saying steam, boiler part, you can boiler cut power. across. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. cut across easy, because you 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 cranking out two hundred seventy thousand horsepower. So you know that's that's a big number to fathom. You know, when you got a large vessel, it, so, it puts, oh. yeah. So, but yeah, that that shit so. right there. Yeah. <laughs> Man, a lot of people don't want to hear that type of shit. You know. Yeah, but I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm that type shit. So, so, do like do I you know. think? Hey, curious. Do you think it's possible? Do you think it's possible to to see this image up there and think that they was coming across the Atlantic? Not. Not like, not like, uh, we we thought, or like, not like you've been told. No. <coughs> not, not, not with something like a uh, small wooden cargo ship. No, not like that. That they had to go to the islands first. Yeah, they had, had, to, go, to, they had to go down south first. To they had first. to. So you know, There's back no in the days, in the Atlantic. Yeah, no back way. in the day, back in the days when they traveled from say say Europe or Africa they followed the coastline they didn't really go out in the deep you know what I mean they didn't go like That's you say come walking. across they didn't come like that they they followed the coastline they always had the coast the land in their basically the land in their sight you know what I mean yep. so that so that yep. way if they had to go to a, a piece pool in they wasn't that far away from a piece of land but 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 come across with a wooden vessel no Hell no. What did they what did they call that? What did they call that? It was um line of sight. Yeah, line of sight. Yeah. That's why I say you, 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 they didn't go, they didn't come across the deep, deep. <laughs> I mean they kept something in sight. For yeah, real. they had to have they they that's how they traveled down the coastlines so they could always have if they needed to pull in the port, storm, storm, sea storms, or whatever, they could pull in or be close to a land for you know shipwrecks. And that's why I keep, I always keep saying, if we know the history, why don't we have the wreckage? Why don't we have the wreckage? 
they can find wreckage of all these other things in the ocean. Why we can't find the wreckage of these things? And a lot of people want to say, well, it was built out of wood. They was built out of this. So it just dissipated. I mean, if well, if you really, if you really, if you really, really understand understand ocean, it's the ocean is graveyards, man. It's ships, all kinds of ships have been sunk in that damn thing, man. It's, it's all kinds of it's it's all kinds of ships down there from earlier times. They down there. I mean, they down there, and and they down there. When I say they down there, they down there. They're, but isn't that like below sea level? Like, can you, you you can't survive trying to go down that far, right? I mean, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Yeah, you can go. You can dive. I, I don't know the, the the actual death. I think altitude. Two, yeah. Feet. Yeah, but but you can't. The, they go. They can go deep. They have deep diving diving uh, subs and shit like that. Yeah, yeah they I can really want to get people yeah. like that on on here. You know, people who you say you was in the military, sir. Yeah, I did twenty three years in the navy. Yes, thank you for your service. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, thank you for your service. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's my cool, father is but... also a, a Desert Storm War vet. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. 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 He was in the parade and all of that. Like, yeah, yeah. They handle business, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> he definitely yeah, but I don't... But like I say, it's not easy to transverse the ocean in in a sailboat. It's not that easy. That's so why I took. Clear, y'all. Give me one second, Curious. Let me let's be clear. This is a person who's a a, a a veteran of our navy. Okay. So y'all really need to listen to this brother when we're talking about sailing and doing things like that. Like the navy's probably has some of the hardest basic training there is. Yeah. You so it. you know, listen to this brother. I'm sorry, Curious. I didn't mean to cut your wisdom, but I just wanted oh, you to make it clear. I, you you run it. You, you run know. the platform. I, I'm respectful. I, I, I'll let you. You know, you do what you yeah. do. I'm just I'm just commenting. Like I say, I did. I did. I sailed on both coasts. I sailed on the East Coast. I sailed on the West Coast. So, um, what's what's uh, uh, Curious? If I could ask you one question, yeah, my brother, who's your fourth? Huh? Who's your fourth? Who's your who's fourth? Who, who, what for, what you mean? Naval force. Who's your naval force? Uh, I was in uh, the Pacific Fleet, and I was with uh, shit. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about naval wise. Who's your force? I, I don't. I don't understand that question. Because the Navy is the force. <laughs> shit, <laughs> that's the force. You know, that's you see. Let me give you the history. You know, Hoorah. the modern modern day modern day military, the modern day navy is. You always wonder whatever happened to pirates. There you go. Just think about what I'm saying. So they 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 they, they made the navy from privateers to run by the government, so called the government, the military. So modern day say modern day slave sailors are no more than modern day pirates. You don't think about it like that, but that's all we were dressed up in all the same kind of uniform. That's all that shit is. It's, it's a mind game. And you, you 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 go out there, you stop ships, you 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 do what you need to do. You you there. <laughs> I mean, it's it's unbelievable the shit that the modern day services do, but it's it's the same shit that they did in the 1500s, 1400s. No, so right. you 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 see the Mar- Marine Corps. Yes. So I was That's who I was alluding to. Oh, That's the Marine Corps. Corps. Well, okay. Well, the Marine Corps is a department of the Navy. You have to Correct. remember the only two branches of service was ever established was the, was the, was the Navy and the Army, right? The Air Force and the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps is a spinoff of the Navy, right? Correct. Marines, aqua, water. That's why they call them Marines. They, they, they do it by sea. So yeah. aboard naval ships, you have attachment of Marine, uh, right? Us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You, you have you have you have attachment of Marines. They call them the mu, if you know what I'm saying. The mu. Oh my god. Don't don't do that to me. Uh-huh. So so the mu, Marine Action Unit, are attached to 
surface surface vessels, some surface vessels, yeah. LHD, LPHs, L LHAs. You know what I'm saying? They don't, you know. But that's how. And so the Navy is the big taxi, just as the Air Force is the taxi for the Army. The Army, the Army was established before the Air Force. So the yeah. Air Force was established in 1942, somewhere around that time frame. The Air Force is not as old as any as the, the Army or the Navy. Mommy, Love you too, baby. Sweet so that's how that works. See you tomorrow. That's I'm sorry, y'all. My kids yeah. are telling oh, yeah. me. Good night. Yeah, yeah. All right, y'all. Hang on for one second. Let's just go here while we talk about them boats. Yeah. Father Ray, Reed Younger, come on, man. Fuck a pan African, fuck a pan African, fuck a pan African, fuck a pan African. Hey, niggas trash like some ooh. Try to get back to them slave folks. Hey, hey, try to get back to them slave folks. Hey, hey. Fuck a slave narrative, they phony. I had this nigga named Toby and he owed me. When the block drop, the stock drop on top, them niggas going. So to the bit of cotton pickers and my niggas. I'ma come down, feed the chillers and them gizzards. Nigga, I'm the best I whip ya, I'll kill you. In the big eyes, go down with the system. Send it back to you, then the sin for your mother. Y'all niggas look out for working like no other. Make you pick cotton to the sun, come and touch it. Take your damn hands and feet and foot all busted. Look me in my eyes, I'm a backhanded booker. Nah. Shout out to Grandma, fool, fool. Why your man can't you the one that sold you? My crew swam to the show and got you. The shit, please, man, that nigga came through. Hey, fuck a pen African, fuck a pen African, fuck a pen African, fuck a pen African. Hey, the niggas trash like the food. Trying to get back to the play, hey, 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 I can turn it on the Fuck y'all, Yes, peace Anyway, y'all. My bad. Hey, uh, hold on. Let me. Before we get back into the conversation, I just wanted to shout out everybody. I'm guessing Cuddy over now because a few more people in here. Hey, y'all. Let me shout y'all out real quick. So, hold on, Free Pop. What's his, y'all, what's, your, what's his name? Free Papua? Whose side are you on? I, I'm just curious. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. For real. That's free Papa. That's free Papa tour. Oh, okay. I, you know, I, you know, T. Lady Moon, hi, baby. Hey, Enos, thank you for still rocking. Big Chief Finger on the trigger. How you doing? Yes, Nate Bad Yow, Aboriginal Israelite. What's popping? Juan Truth, how are you? Milestone Thoughts, what you doing? How are you? Thank you for coming through. If this is your first time, please subscribe to my channel. Um, love to Curious Ones for Fish and Straight Smoke for joining the panel. Um, I'm probably going to drop the link again. I may share some stuff in between, but right now we're just dialoguing about that that uh, slave uh, narrative and that image that they disseminated amongst everyone to make them feel as though Somehow that's related to them and that's a part of their history when we know that not to be the truth. Okay. So Curious One was just building on his military experience and 
different notions like that in terms of crossing that river. So curious one, you can go ahead and um take it back oh, over. Oh, 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 oh. So yeah, like like I was saying earlier of I I I went I was I was stationed out of Pearl Harbor one at one time when I was a young kid. And I was saying we always ended up in the Gulf, no matter which ocean, ocean, which part of the country you're on. If you're on the East Coast, West Coast, it, we always ended up we always ended up in the Gulf. And but as I was saying about the, going to Africa, it seemed like it takes a long time because of how most Navy ships, they turn circles right up and down, run patterns they never go straight unless it's a, a situation where you gotta go straight but to go to africa on a steam on a modern steam driven ship or a gas turbine ship that's the only way that you can truly call cross come from america straight over anything else i don't think that they have the damn power especially by wind or when or anything like that i don't think that that's that's, a, that's it's not possible they always like i say back in the day they always had to run the coastlines line of sight so they could see exactly the laying bodies you know what i mean and they used the stars to, to navigate navigate or the you know the sun how to navigate but to, to come across from america on a sailboat i don't think that that's possible that's just me because like I say, my experience was with a ship that generates a whole bunch of horsepower. <laughs> I mean, when you tell somebody 270,000 horse, that's, that's, that's a lot of goddamn horsepower and they can cut across, but anything else? No subs. Yes. So but, what, yeah. what knots are we talking about? Uh, uh we talking yeah. about up to like 13, 14, 15 now. Shit, boy, you crazy, bro. You crazy. No, man. no, no, no. When I am being I'm being very boy, them damn mild. ships, man. I, I I you know, let's just I'm say being very mild. Okay, this let me just if say have, standard, I, I'm that's, looking that's, at it, I'm looking at curious one. I'm looking at it from how okay. a train goes. Okay, okay. A, a standard barrel is 15 knots, right. Okay, so you standard bell okay. fifteen knots. Yeah, most of the time you you still you travel at a standard bell fifteen. So if you're traveling at a standard fifteen, mm -hmm. and we both know the two most roughest places to drive directly through is the Atlantic and the Pacific. Oh man, that water's terrible, bro. It's terrible. Yeah, it's no way you can do it unless it's through sub. Yeah. Well, I'm, well, you saying sub, but a surface ship can do it. I was on, I was on a large uh, uh, aircraft. You gonna get carrier. beat up? Not you gonna get beat carrier. up? Listen to me. Not aircraft carrier. But <laughs> aircraft carrier, can, aircraft that's carrier, can, different. Can, aircraft carrier, aircraft carrier can go through hurricanes, bro. And you don't even feel it. So that's what that's, I'm saying. That's different. Yeah. I'm talking about look at this slave boat. That's on yeah, the street. Yeah, nah, nah. Slave boat can't do it. Slave boat king. That's what I'm saying. Come on, man. Right, right. That's what we want you to get to. That's yeah, what we want you to get to. That's what he tried to push you to. If, 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 you, if you got, well, maybe, if you maybe got, the if, boat was a trans ship. No, nah, man, it wasn't. No. Oh if, if, you a, if you got a, if you got a sailboat, <laughs> if you got a sailboat, my brother, if you got a sailboat, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't generating. It's gener The wind is pushing it. Right. At best, it's wind sail. Yeah, at best you and and if the seas are choppy, I mean two fish ships seas can because those are sh what they call shallow draft ships, right? If you understand what shallow draft is, they're not deep draft like twenty five feet, thirty feet deep. They're shallow draft. So a small ten a, foot a, draft ships. Yeah. That's so it. yeah, so those particular boats would be shallow drafts, and they would rock like hell. They can't do it. There is yeah, no way they can do it. Right. They would rock like hell. And and if you know about sailing, most of the time they have to, you, you know, they you see them, you see in the movie where they hoist the main, drop the main, use the uh, move the jib, jab, and all that bullshit. It's because the winds change on the ocean. 
one one day the wind one hour, one hour the wind may be going southeast and the next hour it may be going southwest northwest northwest <laughs> southwest whatever 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 you know. You know the wind, so the wind shifts on a continuous basis. Some days is some days is straight. Some days you don't have wind, not a drop of wind. You know, say I, that, I hold on, say that part again. Yeah, some days you don't have wind. Some days none. The, you are at the, the mercy of the sea. Yeah. So some days I use I use the, the carrier that I was on. Some days we would have to do twenty five knots to generate enough wind across the deck so they could launch aircraft. That's because it was no wind blowing on the ocean. Seas flat as hell. So that's I, a possibility. Okay. So I'd love to see one of them. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, okay, curious one. I'm I'm a I'm I'm um I'm one of them guys. I'm one of those guys. I'm a hammerhead. Okay. Yeah, that's what I am. That's what I am. I ain't gonna lie about it no more. I'm a hammerhead. That's just what I do. Okay. That's it. That's it. I love to see I love to see one of them sailboats deal with them big ass waves out there. You are not <laughs> going to be able to not many people <laughs> some waves in the sea. Hold on. A uh, curious one. Am I right? Not many people can stomach those waves. Oh shit. Right, 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 my, motion sickness. My my first ship, my first ship I was on. Man was out of Pearl Harbor. It was uh 187 feet. It was a sort of deep draft. And it was only 100 it was 187 feet, I believe it was 187 feet. That god dang on freaking thing, two feet swells rocked the shit out that ship. I mean, continuous. I was seasick my first year in the Navy. I was seasick the whole the, the, my first year. Every time that damn thing go out to sea, I was sick. Couldn't I couldn't I couldn't. It was so small. That's why when I as I start the longer I stayed in the service, I went to a bigger class of ship. Yeah, so I ended up on on four different classes of ship. Uh, the last one was an aircraft carrier, and it was like every ship I stepped up. You know, we went from a I think that my first ship had a hundred and something men on it. My second one was was like uh 1500 my third one was 3000 and then by the time my 2000s came around i went to a carrier and it was 5500 people on it. Hmm. but you you talking you talking tonnage displacement tonnage and what did they have us at huh what did they have us at what's that i don't understand that i don't your, your aquas your aquas what did they have us at? My aqua. I don't, I don't understand that question, bro. Uh, let's just say, um, geez, oh, let's just say, uh, uh, for for uh, shits and giggles, uh, your, so, your marines. Okay, so on a marine, on a on an aircraft carrier, you have marines and you have uh, you have. Marines and on uh, amphibious, you know, of course you have Marines. That's why they call them amphibious. The yeah. mute. So on a mu on a, on an aircraft on a on an amphibious, you may have a detachment of fifteen hundred Marines, mm -hmm. 1,500 Marines, fifteen hundred uh, sailors. So that's three thousand. Three thousand at best. Yeah, thirty five hundred at at, at 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 surprise. Yeah, yeah. So 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 when when you think of when you think of that displacement th this is what but this is a drive at home some ships generate two hundred thousand gallons of water a day mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying two hundred thousand that's to drive boilers that's to take baths that's to feed that's to shower that's to cook so you think that that's to stay a sailboat <laughs> You would have to have so many gallons per person so that that person that people could survive. Mm -hmm. People don't use common sense because <laughs> they, they ignore that. I'm, 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 I'm just I'm giving you facts because I experienced. It. Yeah, there's only one way to go about that. They can drink the ocean water. 
Shit, you can't drink they can't water. drink water. ocean water. You'll die. You would die. Instantly. You can't do that. You're drinking piss and cum. Are you serious? For real. Do you know what? Hold on. Hold on. I said this earlier, didn't I, Cerise? Yeah. Swart. Yeah, it was how many tons does a whale give off? About 50 lil. Nope. How many tons does a what nah, I'm, joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. Seriously, you said, you said like uh, what you said, ninety thousand or something like that. I'm trying to tell you, bro. They dumping. You, you can't. You can't. Man, just just let me just say, all the ships in, God, in, in the in the world that grow across the ocean. Just think back in the day, they didn't have the technology. They dumped over the side. They pissed over the side. They they didn't have that technology like modern ships have. Nope. Where, where, you know, you can distill your own water. When I say distill, it's two plants that make, take salt water, flash it into steam, condense it back, flash it into steam again, condense it back to make drinking water, potable water. What I was they, trying to get them to understand, curious, was yeah. that in the ocean, in the ocean, you're swimming in pretty much babies and semen that's it that's I, understand, it. I understand you trying to paint that 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 picture but you yeah, have to it. you have to remember how vast the ocean is though and how that water circulates it's salt i get water. it but you yes. know what i'm saying yeah salt Come water on, salt water salt water is 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 a high conductivity and that salt content basically sterilizes everything. That's just that's just what water that water does. It's, it's a salt high salt content, and you can't drink that shit anyway. That's Hold why on. when can can I say this? Yeah, brother. There is no way you can drink seawater. Hell no. At all. No, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're Plus, going to die. I guarantee you. I don't give a fuck what a motherfucker talking about. You're going. You can't. To die. You can't drink it. You can't drink that. Plus, you can't drink that. Plus, all the fuel, oil, all the shit that's dropped in that mug. You cannot drink straight sea water. You have to be able to distill it. And they didn't have that technology. In order to just think about this, <laughs> in order to bring some niggas across the water, you would have to have barrels and barrels of water to give to the people so they wouldn't dehydrate just just keep it real people don't think a lot of people just don't think they're like oh yeah you can do it no you can't and they didn't have water tanks like modern ships have modern ship has steel water tanks in them i mean it's the damn whole ship is nothing but a tank. Different different voids with fresh water, fuel oil, blah, 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 blah. So this is fucking no, it's physically impossible, man. Can they didn't have that kind of technology where they could just pour water in and distill it like that. They, they, no way. They didn't have water pumps to pump potable water in the hull of a ship to sail across with. They didn't have the capability of balancing. They used to, if you watch them old parts of the Caribbean movies, they used to take rocks and move it from one side of the ship to the other side of the ship for ballast. So it's a lot of you stuff. Gotta, hold on for a second. You gotta submit that. You gotta uh, do that for that. Just what type of solid would you like? I mean, to cut y'all wisdom, but I was just reading the comment. In the chat. Anyway, go ahead, fellas. Finish building. I'm a, I'm gonna be back in like I don't know five minutes or so. Just hold it down for me, guys, for a second. But I was just curious. Like, if he writes something in the chat, I'll just come back and look at it. My bad. Go ahead, curious one. Oh no 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 no. Okay, you all right, sis? You all right? If you could do the do the best, do the best. Drop this down right here. 
Go ahead. Black rednecks, white do. liberals. <clears throat> right. Take this down. Go ahead and do what you got to do. We'll be right here for you. Because I know two things. And I know two things. And I know What's a that, few bro? things. What's that, bro? You're not about to tell me about certain things. Because right. I know about a thing or two. Am I trying to I impose it on people? I'm not. Nope. I'm not trying to impose it on anybody. You know why? Because that's privileged information. <clears throat> that's privileged information. So what we was talking about? Oh, the water. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't. You have know, ain't nobody to... coming across the Atlantic, clean across the Atlantic. You know, ain't nobody. Doing Hell it. no. They and and here's the bigger part. They if when they sail down from England, they had to sail because England and Africa is on the same fucking continent, bro. Come on, man. Yep. It don't make no sense. <laughs> it don't make no. Sense. It don't make no sense. It's no way and you they, gonna and, do that. They had to sail down the coast, man. Bro, they had to sail down the coastlines. Now yeah. that's easy. And then they got the off the horn of Africa, man. They got the Cape Verdes down off the horn of Africa. So they use all those islands to to replenish and stop and 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 keep, you know, keep land and to the left to the line of sight. In other words, they kept you ever seen they kept going down and to the left. Yeah. That's it. Canary Canary Islands. That's it. Know, that's why they yeah. met the the, the Jamaicas and Canary Islands. That's how they met all that shit. Yeah. When they came back up through the Gulf of America, they were like, oh shit, this is a whole nother thing. We need right. to send, let's go back. Let's go back, reformulate, recalculate, and we're gonna come back this way. But you but know they what, couldn't man? sail through clear across the Atlantic. They, no. they had to go towards Iceland or Greenland, Iceland, or they Greenland, had to go towards Canada. the Bahamas. That yeah. was it. There That's was it. no sailing through the Atlantic. Everybody just, knows that. That's just like we was talking about a couple of days ago. We was talking, you was talking about Canada. And you, and you brought some stuff back into my mind that I read how the Nordish and all those guys, they sailed the, the Iceland, the Greenland, they sailed that route. And then that's how they ended up in Canada. You feel what I'm saying? Correct. I I, I knew what Correct. you were saying. I knew what you were saying, but it was it, it came it was coming back to me because I had read it so long ago. And the same thing with them with them jokers coming out. That's why Portugal and all them fucking places is the same in the same area. You know, they they always use look left, kept the land to the left so they could sail down. And when they got down there to Jamaica, they came up and around. They came up through the Keys. That's why the French went to Louisiana. You feel what I'm saying? You, a lot you, of you people know. don't know where Dutch land is at. A lot of yeah, people don't York, know where that is. Yeah. New Amsterdam and all that bullshit. They yeah. don't know about Switzerland. They, they, they don't know about Greenland. They don't know about these no. places. It's yeah. a lot of people that still call uh 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 what is that called the upper half of Russia, which is really called um Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. That ain't even Russia, that's Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. They don't even know that part. Right, right. So it's kind of astonishing to me that people claim the things that they claim and i'm sitting there like you don't even know the geographical locations all I, all i can tell you about this all this water is it all it's all tied together <laughs> that's i don't care what they call it indian pacific atlantic mid south china philippine sea oh, it's all connected six years bro hoorah that's me. I, oh, I messed you up when I talked about the mu the mu, huh? Yes. That's why I was sitting over here like shit. I know what that I like me. you say. Like you like you say, bruh. I know what I know. You know what I you know. know. What I, know. I know what I know. 
I know what I know. A lot of people do not understand something unless you actually do something. That's it. Only reason I know so much about ship life, ship ships, is because because I was a I was an engineer. I ran the engineer. I operated the engineering plants. I did the maintenance on the engineering plants that made them damn things go through the water. So everything that I talk about when I say horsepower, shaft horsepower, distilling, evaporation, I know about them because my the guys that I supervise operated it. I operated when I was young, as a as a brother say, when I was a jit, <laughs> a jit. <laughs> I operated them. Then when I became I senior, just, I just happened to be a a ten year contract. Okay, that's I it. I understand what that's you're that's saying. It. I, I understand what you're saying. That's it. I didn't have I knew what I signed up for. I knew what I was doing. I knew everything I was doing. I knew everything hey, I was doing. Hey, I didn't. I didn't have enough. I, 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 I knew that I was going to do what I was going to do. I knew it when my first year in. I knew it. I said I ran up, man. I, we changed the story. I ran up to a, uh, to a, we was on watch. We was crossing the Pacific. We was going over to the Philippines, man. And uh, damn, I said. Uh, I was down there watching boiler flyers because we steam driven ship. I know about steam power plants. I know about them. You can't tell me shit about power plants. I, I know about them, right? I'm an expert at it. Steam or gas turbine, expert at it. Waste heat, whatever you want to call it, I'm an expert at it. And I ran up there to my supervisor. I'm like, bruh, I said, I'm going to do 20 years. And it, oh, oh, dude, old, 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 old pale skin dude said, he was from South Carolina. He down there in the Carolina. He said, he said, man, he said, heal. He said, you may do 20 years, but you get your ass back down there and watch them damn fires. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> he said, and we'll talk about it when you're done with this, with this watch. <laughs> but I knew it. I knew it, bro. I knew it. I knew it then. You it know was, what, what made me fuck? You know what? I'm going to be totally honest with you. Curious. Yeah, you bro. know what fucked me up, bro? What's that? The, the one thing that made me get, that just made me stop more than anything is that I had to be a correspondent. Okay. That's what fucked me up. I can't do that. Right. I cannot do that. Right. I will not do that. I felt like that was the most... Um, egregious thing that i could do considering what you was what i did that would be really bogus as fuck i i don't i don't know how to explain that i understand it wasn't it wasn't a bang bang shoot them up position i got what you're saying i know what you're saying you had to yeah. write about the shit no, it, it was more so that I did field work. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying. Yeah, I, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, and he tried to have me come back and do what? No, no, no. Shout out to my guy Chris. Shout out to my guy Chris. Love you. Dude. Around the world, many years ago, one of the oddities. Uh oh, what is that? Oh, just a quick little excerpt from Thomas Soul. Yeah, I checked it. It don't got a copyright on it. I just had to check it <laughs> before I played it. Fair use notice. It's going yeah, to be on the do screen. your thing, sis. Do your thing. When I first began to study the history of slavery around the world many years ago, one of the oddities that puzzled me was the practice of paying certain slaves which existed in ancient Rome and in America's antebellum South, among other places. In both Rome and the South, That's slave it. owners or their overseers whipped slaves to force them to work, and in neither place was whipping a slave literally to death likely to bring any serious consequences. There could hardly be a greater power of one human being over another than the arbitrary power of life and death. Why, then, was it necessary to pay certain slaves? At the very least, it suggested that there were limits to what could be accomplished by power. Most slaves performing most tasks were, of course, not paid, 
but were simply forced to work by the threat of punishment. That was sufficient for galley slaves or plantation slaves, but there were various kinds of work where that was not sufficient. Tasks involving judgment or talents were different because no one can know how much judgment or talent someone else has. In short, knowledge is an inherent constraint on power. Payment can bring forth the knowledge or talent oh, by giving man, those who that? have it an incentive to reveal it. You got it. Yeah, I got it. Did y'all hear that? Hell yeah. It's about judgments and talent. No, I'm saying you you was good. You was good. Oh, okay. It just so blanked out for a minute. It blanked yeah, out for a good. minute, but you was good. Okay, good. So I'm about to say, I ain't seen nothing on it because he even got a fair use claim on his, on his video. So he banned that. Sufficient. Tasks involving judgment or talents were different because no one can know how much judgment or talent someone else has. In short, knowledge is an inherent constraint on power. Payment can bring forth the knowledge or talent by giving those who have it an incentive to reveal it and to develop it. Payment can rewind that. Rewind that. Rewind that. Rewind that. Knowledge or talent by giving those that was who can know very how important. Much someone else has. In short, not kinds of work where that was not sufficient. Tasks involving judgment or talents were different because no one can know how much judgment or talent someone else has. In short, knowledge is an inherent constraint on power. Payment can bring forth the knowledge or talent by giving those who have it an incentive to reveal it and to develop it. Mm. Payment can vary in amount and in kind. Some slaves, especially eunuchs in the days of the Ottoman Empire, could amass both wealth and power. One reason they could be trusted in positions of power was that they had no incentive to betray the existing rulers and try to establish their own dynasties, which would obviously have been physically impossible for them. At more mundane levels, such tasks as diving operations in the Carolina swamps required a level of discretion and skill far in excess of that required to pick cotton in the South or cut sugar cane in the tropics. Slaves diving in the Carolina swamps had financial incentives and were treated far better. So were slaves working in Virginia's tobacco factories. The point of all this is that when even slaves had to be paid to get certain kinds of work done, this shows the limits of what can be accomplished by power alone. Yet so much of what is said and done by those who rely on the power of government to direct ever more sweeping areas of our life seem to have no sense of the limits of what can be accomplished that way. Even the totalitarian governments of the 20th century eventually learned the hard way the limits of what could be accomplished by power alone. China still has a totalitarian government today, but after the death of Mao, the Chinese government began to loosen its controls on some parts of the economy in order That's to reap lie. the economic benefits of freer markets. That is a lie. As those benefits became <laughs> clear in higher rates of economic growth and rising standards of living, more government controls were loosened. But just as market principles were applied to only certain kinds of slavery, so freedom in China has been allowed in economic activities to a far greater extent than in other realms of the country's life where it's tight Mao. control from the top down remains the norm. That's Mao. Hmm? That's Mao say dumb. That's hmm. Mao say dumb. And it's they're still showing his face. face. They're still, still showing his face. Mao say dumb. Curious, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, that's that's Mao say dumb. Yeah, that's Chinese dictator. Right. Come on, man. Right. Come on, man. They show you. Oh my god. I can't do this no more. This is becoming <laughs> overwhelming for me. This is really becoming overwhelming for me. It's overwhelming. Because it's like it's like no one cares. Yeah. It's like no one cares. People care, but they as long as it don't they don't come, it's not in their backyard. Man, that's right. Man, I, I, I I'm gonna say this, man. I think I anyway. I'm sorry, so I'm, I'm sitting out my driveway this day, right? And I'm sitting in between two vehicles. I had my little lawn chair out there, the sun was shining. 
And I heard I heard one of Pale Skin say, I have to come in here and tell my wife. Pale Skin said, Well, they got five cars in their driveway and two more on the street. I'm thinking. So I I, I changed something. I jumped up and I looked and he was fussing because he seen some cars in my driveway. And my wife said, Well, he, he's right, you we got all these cars. I'm like, no, nah, that's some hating shit. Cause he see he must see that we living good, and he he like, well, he got two cars on the street. That's that's unbelievable. I'm trying to change change the subject, and I'm like, man, these people are something else, man. They no matter I say this, no matter where you live at, these folks are always Ooh, watching. always watching, bro. Ooh, that's Ooh, all I'm gonna say. Always watching. But like I was saying, people don't care because it ain't in their backyard. That's yeah. all. Front yard. But hey, let me let me let me let me change the subject again. Did you are y'all looking on Facebook and seeing all this stuff from TikTok about the uh melanated melanated people in the world? And y'all am I the only one that's getting these feeds? I don't subscribe to TikTok. Yeah, I don't subscribe to TikTok. I got Facebook, but they, it's all it's showing up left and right. And as soon as it show up, I post it. So in my neighborhood, I know <laughs> in my neighborhood, I'm a part of this. Be community. very careful. Be very and, careful because yeah. that is a that and TikTok is a platform to where you can do anything with any video you can do. Seriously. Right. Right, okay. but but what 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 I'm posting is because I'm I'm posting about the the indigenous Americans, I post about the digital Americans because I know that it's factual. You know what I mean? Because we 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 in this we in this fight to in the in in this in this search for knowledge. But I be posting that shit, and I know that these people are, they get they piss man. They can't say nothing, but they piss. I had one person comment oh i like to see your degree i didn't even respond back little what? you know degree I, what huh degree because I'm what? but this is what i posted i posted on there it's something about the black japanese right and basically what i said is we have to get out the mindset of always when you see a melanated individual you got to get out the mindset that he's from africa he those individuals may be just melanated Japanese. So when I posted it, right, somebody responds back. Oh uh, well, uh, well the researchers. One of one guy said, well the researchers, uh, the researchers say this is this is this. I didn't even respond back. And then somebody else. Well, we like to see your degree. Literally, you no, know, I got I I have a graduate degree and four certifications. So the the boy ain't no dummy. I didn't even go back and forth with them cats because we need to show the damn video again. Huh? That's like we must need to show the video again for them. The DNA video. Say it again. No, <laughs> it's not so much. It's not so much as DNA. It's more so experience because a That's lot it. of those guys he's talking about have not done shit. No, they just not. believe in the narrative. Yeah, they just hold I'm, on. I'm, I'm trying to tell you. They have not done shit, shit, not shit. It's, it's easy. Works. It's easy for a lot of these dudes to sit over here on their keyboards and you're chatting all that other shit. But it's a difference when you have guys that actually went out and put up the fight. When I say the fight, I'm talking about the fight. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. They don't. They just want to respond back. That's why I say. Uh, pale skin is is upset because it can't be hidden anymore, and it seemed yeah. like a lot of uh, all of us, a lot of our people are waking up. I mean, God, dog, it, it's it's a it's it's a flood now. It's a flood now. Yeah. So we Even just need the smallest inkling of it getting out is hurting their ass. Right. Right. That's knowing about it. It's too much. Right. A movement being started is too much. Right. Any type of, you, you know, to it. You got to understand. Yeah. This is all through your own personal information. This is through your information. Mm -hmm. 
This is through your information. That's all. Man, I'm 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 happy. I'm happy to be at this state of my life to where I'm Fuck, seeing I ain't this. Release that shit about me. Yeah, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy to see it because because for a while, I'm just like all oh, y'all may have felt the same way at one point, man. I thought I was the only one, man. I'm like, man, it, this shit is not. Yeah, <laughs> this shit is not. But I can't believe that nobody else is knowing this. Yeah, I can't believe that resonating with them the same. That brainwashing be some serious shit. Right. Like me, like for real, it's been a lot of damage that's been done. And like, I don't know, one day my little stuff just, it just snapped. And I was just in another dimension with my beliefs out of nowhere. Me too. Me too. People couldn't believe it. They was like, man, what the, what the fuck? What you want? <laughs> I said, I'm on that Aboriginal Something Indian that shit. That's not. what I'm on. Something that you're not. When I, when I, you're I've not been, because been, you know what? It's something that you're not because you didn't you you don't know, but you right. know what? You will know. Mm -hmm. You and will but, know. But a lot of people still want to hold on to that old belief system. I mean, they. Yeah. I mean, they fighting two for nail, fighting two for nail to hold on to it. It's a bunch of BS, man. And then I think it's something. It's a bunch of BS. Know, I tell people Fun. all this too. Because I'm like, if you look into your family, I said, you might actually discover that, you know what I'm saying? You didn't even have any slaves in your family that actually they were free. Yeah. They're probably successful in this land. Right. But you won't even take the time to look at it because you just take it for face value that you got ancestors as slaves. Right. <laughs> they can just tell you. And you're not going to go and do any, any research. And you're not going to, they, they bake on us not doing that. Right. And this is where we always lose. Hold on. Know. Hold on. Yeah. You want to know the second part that we, where we lose that for real? What's that? Our, our actual coat of arms. Right. Seriously. You're right. There You're was right. a lot of us that fought for our freedom. For real. Right. You're right. You're right. I really need people to understand that aspect of everything. I'm serious. Yep. You're right. A lot of folks I'm do. Serious. Uh, yep. You know, when I when I sent you that those timelines a long time ago, man, you know, yeah. I had like I said, I had had that shit on my computer for a while, man. And and when you and the Dude, all you did was give me some time to make sure I can fill in underscore those dates. Yep. That's oh, all. No, I gotta do something real quick. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people are not gonna agree with this, but not a question of if, but when there's going to be a chemical or biological attack on the American people, and what is their solution? They say, give up our. I'm hustling and I'm grinding. I'm making moves with my money on my mind, and I can't fall short. No, no, always go, go. Keep it down for your slow mo. Oh, oh.
Shout out to the mama chief. Yeah, you be quiet when big mama speak. What she gave us is a part of me. It flows through my arteries. Even on that journey, that love grows how the garden be. The first to teach us when we sit, the first to heal us. Mama's boy, yeah, you know, her pride and joy. Soul food, yeah, you know, I'm an enjoy. Calm you down just by the sound of a voice. There isn't another feeling inside. When they cheering you on, that you gain. And you feeling the pride. You and your siblings fighting, she gon' make you put them feelings aside. She can't lead you down the road, but she can get you to die. Where you think I get that blissful look? Look in my eyes, I need a side of ice cream with Vimma's apple pie. You know for sure for Mama Chief, you know I'ma ride. Cause we all need a Mama Chiefs. Yeah, we all love a Mama Chiefs. The greatness, the patience, the foundation, the knowledge passed down. So many generations, our motivation. I just wanna thank you for my creation. Cause we all love a Mama Chiefs. Yeah, we all need a Mama Chiefs. Yeah, we all rap for Mama Chief. The dedication, I sing your tears at my graduation. Now look, my your boy that made it. You the reason I'm one of the greatest. Yeah, cause we all need a Mama Chiefs. Yeah, we all love a Mama Chiefs. Yeah, we all rap for Mama Chief. Now be quiet, let Big Mama speak. Let Big Mama speak, okay? Shout out to Drake Cobbs and shout out to everyone who made it into the chat tonight. Thank you all so much. Yeah, we're just doing a lovely build. Y'all see the title, um, The Reality of Ship Crowded in the Transatlantic Slave Trade. Like, we keeping it a buck about this shit out here. And we probably going like, to end up shifting gears in a little bit because, like I said, as more people come in, I know I'm getting new people who's never seen me before, who have never heard of me before. So I'm Sharice the Realist. Thank you. And welcome to my channel. Welcome to my show. And I'm happy to have you here. So yeah, we just in here cooking real quick. Damn, Carrie, is one dropped off? No worries. Come on back next time. But yeah, it's been about four hours and 13 minutes. Yeah, got me rocking, yeah. Got me rocking with y'all. Hi, girly girl. You made it back, sis. So yeah, straight smoke. How you feeling? How you feeling tonight? Man, I can't call. <laughs> I'm gonna continue to do the same thing I always do. Straight smoke. Swarfish, you good? Everybody was sipping they little whatever they was doing, you know. Just want to make sure everybody's copacetic. And I got mm. one as always, as always. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris One. You're welcome anytime. And like, you know, maybe you could man, I wish you would have dropped your email or something in the back chat because I would love to uh you know have you elaborate more on that ocean piece and how significant mm -hmm. that is. Since seeing as though that you know you got experience in the navy, you know, mm -hmm. maybe you got some colleagues that may have more experience that might have been over the Atlantic, you know, sailing through the Navy or whatever, you know, if they're willing to. They ain't got to come on camera, but you know, you know what I mean. Willing to come and speak about their experience, and you know, yeah, because yeah, they, majority they of them. Typically do it. I know that wouldn't ship, wouldn't doing shit. <laughs> yeah, when when when, yeah, when the, I ain't gonna even lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you. The last thing you want to see. I ain't going to lie to you. The last thing you want to see is the Army, but you really do not want to see the Navy. You don't. You just don't. You don't. Respect to all of our veterans, all of our people who go out here and risk their lives for the sacred sea and for the protection of this country. Thank you so much. We salute you. You know, we hate, we hate the circumstances in which you got to do what you got to do, but we know you got to do what you got to do. So, so yep. you know, stay safe out there. My dad is a veteran. My dad fought when I was a little girl, very, very little, you know, and um, like, I think a lot of people really don't talk about the veterans experience and, you know, the things that they see and the things that they witness and, you know, the things that they got to, if they make it home, you know, they got to come home and deal with all of that. So it's a lot, you know, that's going to be a build in itself because I think a lot of people don't like to talk about mental health. And we need to normalize talking about those things because us as a people, you know, I can honestly say I feel like we've experienced a lot of trauma, you know, even just 
within our personal experiences. And then you have to take into consideration the power of the imagery, such as this goddamn slave boat. <laughs> and I'm motherfucking mental health. You know what? I can't do it no more. I can't do it no more. <laughs> it's not, it's not I funny. It no I'm more. trying to be serious. You go separate. Can't do it no more. Seriously, though, come on now. Think about it. I'm, I'm trying to be honest. Right? I can't, I can't do now. it. I mean, they said it, it, it was a, it, uh, they did this in 1789. I don't really believe that, but think about that. I believe it's some new shit. That, I think he said 1972. Some, some more. the first time that this shit? image was disseminated upon his people. Some more reconstruction shit. Man, some bullshit to keep people thinking they slaves and was trapped at the bottom of the boat. That's all. Uh, I'm just saying, don't they need to keep you in your in your status, right? All day. Keep you slaving and working for them. Mm -hmm. All of us. Yeah. That's why they make us put our kids in school and we go out here and work all day. And nobody even realized, like, you're going from nine to five at the same shit every fucking day. Oh, you don't man. think that's slavery? Scroll down. Just scroll you don't down. think that's because you, you, you make some money that you're not in slave? Well, there it is. That's all I need to see right there. That's I'd all I need to do to nothing right all day in my life. God, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, strength, smoke. Let me get this out. If I had the opportunity yeah. to, you know, God. I wouldn't do anything. I would just chill and be a mom and take care of my kid. But like we live in a society where that's not allowed. And then if you, you know, then it looks like, oh, you're just lazy. No, no, no. What's happening is, is people are being forced to work, even though they don't see it as being forced. But they are. Because guess what? If you don't work, you're not going to have anything else, right? You're not going to have any food, clothes, shelter. How are you going to get things for yourself? And in order oh, to benefit. Let me shut up. Let me shut up. Hold on. Because I'm about to bring it home. Because all of this bullshit has contributed to what? This stupid, silly image that got us thinking this was us in a it's a problem. Because we weren't Nikki. How could you do this? How, Sway? So I gotta be the one to say this for real? Say anything you like. Honey. I gotta be the one to say this for real. I want to be the one to say this for real. I don't want to be the one to say this for real. <laughs> so, so, okay, fine. Let's take this at face value. Mm -hmm. How many of you niggas are just walking up saying, fuck it, I'm gone? Right, well, just let some white skinny ass pale person come and steal you. Hold you on. Hold on. You know how we are. Does that sound like a jail release? Because last time I checked, isn't that the same thing that happened with the pilgrims? As they as they said, mm -mm. huh? Yo, Mayflower shit. Those are all people from jail. Oh yeah. Does everybody not remember that? <laughs> Most of them was like. That. Most of the white people that got here, it was under circumstances where they were committing crimes and shit to begin with. And they're, they and didn't want to go with the Church of Christ. Yep. <laughs> they didn't want to do that. They got persecuted. <laughs> so they came in. Let's just take that at face value. But guess what those people were? Small hats. Mm -hmm. For real. Why why are we not looking at this shit for real? What is the problem? You know what the problem is? It's mental. It's no. mental. I'm telling you. No, I can't call it mental. Man, this shit is mental. This shit is mental. This shit sure. is playing on sure. our mental. Sure. Right here. And our intelligence. Come on, you now. really want me to say this? What you mean? You say it's mental, or do you want yeah, to use my statement? This is a condition. Statement? I'm talking. You want to use my statement? I agree with you. I'm just stating. What's I'm my statement? Just saying. What's my statement that you agree with?
I agree with what you are saying. Oh, yeah. You can say I'll it out loud and proud. <laughs> you want me to do it? I'll do it. Because you want me to do it. It's oh, called man. retardation. Sure. It's you called know you can't use that word anymore. Oh, well, hey, hold on. I said it in syllables, so I can use that word. <laughs> Retardation. Swordfish, why are you so quiet? Does he know I'm right? <laughs> no, I'm just hanging out, man. <laughs> that's, that's all he's that nigga do. I was he's, he's, he's a lounge. I'm talking about that's a leopard lounge right there. He know what he know. Yeah, I was doing a little reading too, so he know yeah. what he know. Am I wrong, Schwartz? Nah, uh, yeah, man. Yeah. I know what I know. I sit here, man. I was I was just listening and reading at the same time. That's why though. Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah we can hear you. I accidentally unplugged the thing for like two seconds. I was like, what the hell? Anyway. No, y'all. Seriously. We we got to stop this. But I want to go into a little bit of this commentary from this Senate hearing. Because I know, like, I did show it before. But like I said, it's new people. People that, you know, never seen me before come in. I want to introduce, like, all the stuff that's been going on in terms of the talks in the communities about, you know, black people and our relationship to the five civilized tribes and other tribes, all the tribes, because we are the original people, period, all. But yeah, they just talk, you know, a little bit about this um, 1866 Reconstruction Treaty. So we all understand that, you know, a lot of the treaties that was created was based upon <laughs> them also solidifying rights for so-called colored people or so-called Negroes or so-called freedmen. Am I correct on that history, guys? Is there anything that I that I missed right there? Well, it's only one thing about what you're saying. Only one mm -hmm. thing. It's only one thing. There was no such thing as a freedman. Nah, yeah, of, yeah. I'm, you know, political terms. That was all. That's it. <laughs> Other than that, I'm, I'm good with everything you said. I'm not a fool. There's no such thing as a freedman. Because yeah, because I want to. Yeah, I want to give that the yeah. freedman disclaimer because they're going to use that a lot. Yeah. They're going to use that a lot. Us. Yeah, they're going to use that to describe us. Good afternoon. Welcome to the committee's oversight hearing on select provisions of the 1866 Reconstruction Treaties between the United States and Oklahoma tribes. In, eight, in the 1830s, the U.S. forcibly removed the Choctaw, Chickasaw, Cherokee, Muscogee Creek, and Seminole nations from their ancestral homelands in the southeast to Oklahoma on the Trail of Tears. And where is the southeast at? Straight smoke. Oh, you left. Child, never mind then. I guess I'm on my own tonight. At the same time, individual members of the five tribes enslaved black people continuing to do so through the civil war. And guys, please understand, we all know when they say you're slave, you know, we, we know not to take that at face value, okay? A lot of the people who was a part of these tribes and other tribes, because those were not the only tribes, civilized is the key word in this situation, okay? So you have to understand how many people was displaced. A lot of us was living off their ancestral land. A lot of us was living off the reservation. This is a fact. Okay, and that's why when I showed this uh, census here, not this census, it doesn't show these Native Americans not getting here until 1860. So who was they enslaving? Okay, 1860 Asian Native Americans. So let's keep it in perspective, okay? Like these folks have assumed the identity. Y'all about to see it. In 1866, the five tribes signed treaties with the United States, which further reduced their land holdings 
and contain provisions about emancipation of enslaved peoples who are collectively referred to as the freedmen. Now, for the first time in the history of the United States Senate, these sovereign signatory tribes, freedmen descendants, and the administration have an opportunity to present their views on the 1866 treaties for the record. I understand and acknowledge that this is a difficult conversation because this issue at its core involves injustices perpetrated by the United States government more than a century ago against both Native Americans and African Americans. It is emotionally charged from- Do y'all understand what he just said? That is a difficult conversation for them to have. Man, it's difficult for us. The ones y'all stole our identity from. ...about emancipation of enslaved peoples who are collectively referred to as the freedmen. Now, for the first time in the history of the United States Senate, these sovereign signatory tribes, freedmen descendants, and the administration have an opportunity to present their views on the 1866 treaties for the record. I understand and acknowledge that this is a difficult conversation because this issue at its core involves injustices perpetrated by the United States government more than a century ago against both Native Americans and African Americans. It is emotionally charged for many and for good reason, years long litigation and disagreement over citizenship status of freedmen descendants among the five treaty tribes has divided communities and even divided individual families. But disagreements cannot get resolved in silence. And so we will soon be hearing from tribal leaders and representatives for each of the five tribes who will speak to their nation's treaty provisions with respect to freedmen descendants. Representative Waters, who has fought for freedmen descendants' rights for years, particularly in her leadership of the House Financial Services Committee, as well as Marilyn Van, whose advocacy through her organization has raised awareness for freedmen descendants of all five tribes. And later this afternoon, I look forward to a deeper, deeper dialogue with individual leaders of freedmen groups. So it is our goal today to start a respectful dialogue, to listen to different perspectives, both in a formal setting and informally among members of Congress, tribal leaders, and freedmen advocates, and to educate the committee and the public with accounts relating to our nation's two greatest failures the removal of native peoples from their traditional homelands and the enslavement of black people. Descendants of both, many here today, still carry the pain of those grave injustices. I just, the only thing that I just don't like is how they always keep trying to make it seem like these folks was enslaving us. No, the fuck, they was not. Them was our peoples, all. Oh. It wasn't giving us slaves. Everybody was together. I look forward to a respectful conversation that takes into account the historic importance of this hearing. I'll now recognize Vice Chair Murkowski for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for convening today's very, very important and, as you know, a historic Hearing. I apologize that I'm not there in person, uh, but COVID is keeping me here in Alaska for this week. The history of the post-Civil War Reconstruction Treaty Tribes, the Cherokee, the Chickasaw, Choctaw, Muscogee, and Seminole Nations, often referred to as the Five Tribes, and the Freedmen, the lineal descendants of African-American slaves owned by the Five Tribes, is part of history that that perhaps many Americans are not familiar with, nor do they fully understand. It is a complicated history of injustice and of sorrow for both Indian tribes and African Americans. And as you have noted, Mr. Chairman, this can be an uncomfortable discussion. It can be uncomfortable to talk about uh, what was brought on by the federal government's own policies of forced removal of native peoples from their ancestral homelands. And they know who the fuck got removed though. It was like, what, what, 
they keep making it seem like they just enslaved us and they removed them. No, y'all removed us. That's exactly what happened. We were the ones removed and out here living in the ghettos and stuff. That's what was going on. The enslavement of African peoples. I understand that each of the five tribes has a very unique history with freedmen based on separate treaties with the United States. So I am interested in learning more about what these treaties entail and the obligations of both the tribes and the federal government to freedmen descendants. So I do want to say how appreciative I am that the Indian Affairs Committee is examining this history and that the five tribes- How the hell she don't know what the treaty say? Exactly. Exactly, tomorrow she wanna know what they entail. But why are you up there? <laughs> If you don't already know what they entail, with oh, your big head ass sitting over there with the COVID for that week, girl. Shit, though, Sarah Palin, they living it up. <laughs> four damn minutes, and they already on some bullshit. Like, I'm tell you, like the history that they got ingrained, it is no joke. And this is the reason why we in this shit show now. Along with the Department of Interior to have a constructive and again, a respectful dialogue about how we might move forward together. This is indeed long, long overdue. I agree with the chairman that we should task the GAO, the Government Accountability Office, with investigating what federal services the freedmen receive and should receive in the future from the federal government. And with that, I turn back to you, Mr. Chairman. Again, thank you for convening this very important and very substantive hearing. And for the many witnesses that are there in person today, thank you for traveling to be before the committee on a very important topic. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Vice Chair Murkowski, and we wish you a speedy recovery and look forward to seeing you soon. Are there other members of the committee wishing to make an opening statement? If not, we'll turn to our first witness uh, who uh, is a towering figure in history enough so that she comprises her own panel. Uh, we are um, pleased to uh, uh, introduce the Honorable Maxine Waters, U.S. Representative for the 43rd Congressional uh, District. Um, and listen to her wild ass. Uh, in California. Yeah. Uh, Congresswoman, your full written testimony will be made part of the official hearing record, and we look forward to your remarks. Please proceed with your testimony. Hey, Sharice, I'm getting, I'm getting sleep. I'm about to drop, all right? Members of the committee. No worries. Go on ahead. Shoot, I said I was going to like do this, comment on this, and go ahead and be out for the night myself. So thank you for coming up, Swordfish. I really appreciate it. No problem. No problem. I'll be up here again. All right. I know you will. <laughs> All right. All right take peace, care. peace. Today, I'm here to discuss an issue I care very deeply about, but has been ignored for far too long. Many remain unfamiliar with the history of those who came to be known as the Native American freedmen and the ongoing plight of their descendants. The freedmen were black individuals who were enslaved by five formerly slave-holding tribal nations and were forced to walk and suffer on the Trail of Tears alongside their slave masters. A year after the Civil War ended, the five tribes agreed to abolish slavery and accept freedmen and their descendants as full tribal citizens under the 1866 treaty agreements they made uh, with the United States government. Specifically, the 1866 treaties required the five tribes to abolish slavery and to agree to treat and accept formerly enslaved individuals and their lineal descendants as equal tribal citizens. For example, the treaty signed by the Cherokee Nation reads, 
and I quote, all native born Cherokee, all Indians and whites legally members of the nation by adoption and all freemen who have been liberated by voluntary act of their former owners or by law, as well as free colored persons who were in the country at the commencement of the rebellion and are now residents therein or who may return within six months from the 19th day of July, 1866, and their descendants who reside within the limits of the Cherokee Nation shall be taken and deemed to be citizens of the Cherokee Nation, quote unquote. The four other tribes all signed similar treaties. Despite the- So if they signed the treaties, why are they not abiding by the treaties? The fact that these treaty obligations still exist and are binding on the five tribes beginning in the late 1970s and early 1980s, the tribes began to take formal actions to take away the citizenship rights of descendants of freedmen. For instance, in 1983, freedmen were prohibited from voting in Cherokee Nation elections and received letters informing them that their citizenship had been canceled. In 2007, the Cherokee amended their constitution to limit citizenship to only individuals who were, quote, Cherokee by blood, unquote. These actions led to years. All right, y'all, look. I'm about to... I need to end abruptly, but I don't need to, you know, I gotta get over here. So let me go ahead. I gotta go, but it's been four hours and 38 minutes. I'm gonna roll out. So y'all be safe, stay dangerous. Fuck them other niggas because I'm down for my niggas always. And y'all be good.